the way came to Tennessee. Ball taken on about the two yard line. He steps across the 10, the 15, and going to be knocked down shy of the 20 by Anthony Hampton. Penalty flag. We'll see what Jimmy Harper and his crew have called here as the penalty flag falls on the very first play of the ball game. Take a look at the Oklahoma State backs and receivers, the people who will have their hands on the ball. Jones at quarterback, he's a very good one. Grenier, Thompson, Mays at tight end, wide outs are Luck and Richardson. And the offensive line, Linen, Waterbury, Hope, Henson, and Offutt. And they're pretty young as well. They have their work cut out for them today. So it's against Oklahoma State. Pulls the ball back to the 10-yard line, and they start in a hole. Tone Jones, Jr., will lead them out of there. He's not a great passer. He's hitting only about 34% of his passes, but they prefer to go on the ground. Send a man in motion to the right. He may be checking off here. Tennessee jumps a bit, and a whistle finally sounds. Too much time. May have been. Condridge, he took an awful lot of time. Tennessee a little bit impatient. We'll see if they jumped into the zone. As you see from Jimmy Harper, it is delay of the game. So Oklahoma State Condridge doing exactly what they didn't want to do here, and let's get off to a start with a couple of mistakes. Start off with back-to-back -back penalties, and the problem there, Tony Jones came into the game. The clock was already running. He uh, he came from the sidelines a little bit late, which didn't give him enough time and uh, just delay the game there. We'll set the Tennessee starters in just a moment. They've had a few changes today because of injuries. Here's the handoff to the tailback. He's trying to get outside. Not much there. Tennessee closes it down. David Thompson, who's five foot eight and weighs 200 pounds, very solid built young man. Raymond Austin made the stop. Raymond Austin is the leading tackler on the Tennessee team this year, and he's one of the leaders all around. The swarming defense. Everybody's getting to the ball. Steve White and Raymond Austin comes up with a tackle. Tennessee is a pursuing defense, and that's one thing they stress every day, every day, pursue to the football. All right, Oklahoma State with their back to the wall here. Back to the checkerboard, you, you might say. Tony Jones wants, well, drops back, a little delay to his tailback, David Thompson, and Steve Johnson comes out of the secondary and made the stop. Oklahoma State, by the way, has an excellent punter. We'll talk about him in a moment. There's the Tennessee defensive lineup. It's Little, White, Burton, and Barron on the line with the linebackers Gallion, Hines, and Kidd. And in the secondary, you've got Jenkins, Johnson, Noel, and Austin. Terry Fair is not in there today because he was banged up a little bit in the Mississippi State game, and they're holding him out. Noel, by the way, has been improving dramatically, so he gets a starting nod today. Jones sends a man in motion out to his right. He may want to throw here. He got blasted by Leonard Little. Whoa. <laughs> Leonard has arrived, I think, Condridge. Take a look. Well, quick is as quick does. There's a back trying to get there to a point, but uh, Leonard Little is just so unbelievably quick with a little bit of size at 220 and uh, a running back does not have a, a great chance against him one on one. He has a little more trouble with big defensive tackles, but not running backs. Greg Ivey averages almost 44 yards a kick. He's kicking from the back of the end zone and Sean Summers settles under a nice punt. Comes out to the 45, gets by one man midfield and crosses into Oklahoma State territory to the 48 before he is stopped by Trent Fisher. 52 yards on the kick and 10 yards on the return. Tennessee's offensive lineup. Manning, of course, at quarterback. Eric Lane gets the start today at fullback ahead of Chester Ford, who's bruised up a bit. And Graham, of course, tailback. Pfeiffer starts it in. David Horn with a broken leg in the Mississippi State game out for the year. And the wideouts you see there. And the big, experienced Tennessee offensive line of Lehman, Peterson, Miller, Smith, and Poole talked with Joey Kent before the game and he is fully recovered. He's ready to go 100% from his vicious hit he got against uh, Florida, but he's ready to go. 
he suffered a mild concussion and a laceration of the tongue in uh, in that ball game when he took that hit Condridge so I'm sure it's been uh, painful for him well I think a mouthpiece is in order from now on I'd say it <laughs> might have dropped a few pounds probably been on a soup diet here for a while but uh, Joey is back and Tennessee is blessed with perhaps Condridge you've been around here a long time and thrown to a lot of great receivers but they may have right now the deepest receiving core they have ever had here well it, it's deep but I can remember just recently in the past when uh, Carl Pickens was the number three receiver so they they had to be pretty deep on that that's that group deep. of guys too <laughs> Tennessee puts it in motion here after a an official timeout and he hands off to his tailback who's coming outside Jay gets across the 40 and to about the 38 yard line Jay Graham with Hit by Alama Bailey out of the linebacker spot. Bailey is a, a very big guy, weighs about 255. In fact, they've got a couple of big linebackers. Now, Oklahoma State plays a three-man front, four linebackers. They play a nose guard. That nose guard weighs 240 pounds, and Bubba Miller right in front of him for Tennessee weighs 285 at least. That makes for a long day if you're going to line up and go one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have to do a lot of stunning and a lot of different types of things when you don't have that many rocks in your pocket. You got to get a little, do a little few stunts. Eric Lane out of fullback goes right behind Bubba Miller and picks up a little bit of yardage before Alama Bailey makes the stop for Oklahoma State Cowboys. The record is one and three. Tennessee, of course, three and one. Balls go on the road after this one to Arkansas next week. Peyton Manning sets his team. Whiteouts, two of them at the top of your screen Manning tosses out and it's batted down a oh, dangerous situation almost Javon Langford who's the best of the linebacking core best defender on the team as a matter of fact almost picked that one off that this is just a well defense play it's supposed to be a little swing screen but even if the ball had gotten through there was a defender right there waiting to make the play so Oklahoma State defense had that one pegged all the way scouted quite well ball on the 36 yard line of Oklahoma State Manning hands off to his tailback big hole for Jay Graham and he rambles before Kevin Williams can make the stop picked up 11 and the balls are moving Jay balls. Graham is getting more confidence as he goes on which everybody expected him to do anyway but from the first game to this game you can see just his uh, his vision is much better he's taking advantage of holes right away and he's not hesitating and he's getting right up to the point of attack and making great runs all right handoff again to Graham and he runs behind the big line and picks up a little yardage before Kevin Williams again makes the stop out of the secondary strong safety made the stop that time of Jay Graham Graham is a uh, as you can see a very well built young man he weighs in the neighborhood of 215 maybe a shade over he got a little gun shy after a couple of fumbles Condridge in the Florida game but I think he got out of that quickly in the Mississippi State game and his confidence is back well yes it is he uh, when you're young like that and, you, and the onus is put on you to be the guy fumbles or can't be a part of your repertoire so he didn't take that too kindly and he's taking every effort to cover that up well, he tried to get outside that time. Not a whole lot of running room as uh, Norman Williams, the nose tackle, trailed and made the play for Oklahoma State. You'll but see, it's enough. Well, it's just a, a dive, a eye back formation running off tackle. But if you, you'll take a look at the end of this run, watch Jay cover the ball. So he's been he's been uh, spoken to a little bit about protecting the football, and that's something that he's doing very well. He comes the first down and ten to go at about the 14 yard line. Once again, they try to go right down the middle, and they are successful, crossing the 10-yard line. Alama Bailey and company made the stop that time. Again, if you'll note, the Oklahoma State team is a three-man front with four linebackers. Don't see too many of those uh, formations. Most everybody in the SEC, I think now, just about everybody, Condridge runs the four-man front. Yes, they do, and you definitely don't see that many three-man fronts with a very light nose guard. 
There's the pitch outside. Be. Jay Graham fighting almost there, not quite. Comes up about uh, six inches short. Johnny Jones from cornerback position made the stop for Oklahoma State. This is just a toss sweep, and if you'll take a look at Eric Lane, he makes the key block right up front, gives Jay Graham the opening, and the rest is just power running, finishing off the run. Godridge, Tennessee hasn't used the toss sweep that much. Uh, no, they haven't. In recent years. In recent years, you knew what was coming here, but it didn't happen this time. Oh, touchdown. Now they raise the hand. Did get in. The old James Stewart leap over the <laughs> delayed a little bit a little on that bit one. delayed and finally got the hand signal from the official and the balls are on the scoreboard six to nothing moving 45 yards on that drive and taking only just a lead plays. eye back little up and over he lands on his feet watch this next effort up and over Jeff Hall with Please. Jason Price holding for the extra point it's on the way and it is good. And the balls lead seven to nothing. Came into this one favored by about 34, but some strange things have happened around the country this football season, even this day. So you're always hesitant uh, in games like this, Condridge. I know these are the type games that worry coaches who are in the favorite role. Is your team up? Are they taking everything seriously? And so far, it looks like Tennessee is. Well, that's true, but. There's always a Northwestern out there somewhere. You have to be ready to play every week. And I think what they did the first week of the season won't be forgot for, for, forgotten for a long time. All right, that drive covered 48 yards in nine plays, took 239. Let's go down to Missy. Hi, Missy. Hey, guys, I tell you what, this man is still as feisty now, I think, as he was. Play. He wants to be the workhorse. He wants to be the guy that carries the majority of the time and leads the team in that, and that's the that's what he wants to do. He looks forward to that. Tony Jones at quarterback for the Cowboys. Ball at the 21. They try a little slant outside and it's uh, pretty effective. Got almost nine yards on that one. Out of tailback David Thompson. That looked a little bit like a Barry Sanders move. Did you see that? A little spin <laughs> there on it too. A little lead. Eye back. Well no single back running. He watch this. Whoops. Make you miss. That's a good move there. That's a great move there by David Thompson. Yeah, he has uh, he has seen Barry run. Maybe About they, a yard shy of a first. Maybe they just maybe that's part of the drills at Oklahoma State because Thurman Thomas did the same thing too. One running back, receiver split left and right this time. If they need only a yard for a first, to pass here by Oklahoma State would be a surprise. And it didn't surprise Tennessee. They were expecting run all the way. Steve White, first man in to nail David Thompson that time. Steve White's having a very, very good year. Number 64 there from Memphis. Had a good year last year, as a matter of fact. Led the team in sacks. Steve White just takes an inside charge and uh, beats his, his offensive lineman. And, uh, made a good play. There's big Steve. So now Oklahoma State looks at a third down and four situation. I would call this a critical down for them. They're down seven to nothing. Haven't been able to generate any offense thus far. They need something positive to happen right here. And it does. Tennessee racks up Thompson. Defense swarming on it. Kid was there along with Ron Green. You know, it looks as if the Oklahoma State offense is just they're, they don't want to make mistakes and they're trying to stay as basic as they can. But sooner or later, they're going to have to open it up. They're going to have to take a chance at maybe making a mistake, but try to move the ball down the field, probably with play action pass or something simple, maybe like a drop back uh, screen or something. But uh, just running the ball at the Tennessee defense is going to it'll make it for a long day. Greg Ivey is in punt formation. Got pretty high snap and oh, he just barely got it away. But he got away a pretty nice kick. Sean Summers settles under it and doesn't have anywhere to run out of room tell you what that was an excellent effort by that punter because he came very very close to having it blocked Trent Fisher made the stop that time of Sean Summers Sean Summers may have to do most of the kick returning today Terry Fair had been working there some but since Fair is sort of bruised up and being held out of action today it's probably going to be a mostly all Summers that punt was for 44 yards, so he's had a couple of real nice ones 
came in averaging as I said almost 44 a game. Here's Peyton Manning rolling. This so may be a busted play. play. Yep. Somebody didn't get the message there. Peyton turned and there was no one there. As soon as he comes back and talks to the tailback, I think you have a good indication as to what happened. <laughs> <laughs> With, that's usually the way it works. It's either one or two things. He said, now, Jay, you went the wrong way, or Jay, act like I'm not saying anything. It was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> one of the two. Manning has twin receivers at the top of the screen and a split out here on the bottom of the screen, and that's where he's going. Complete to Maurice Staley up around the 40 yard line. Maurice Staley has a chance, I think, Condridge to be one of the all time great receivers at Tennessee. He's got all the tools, very, very strong. Size, too. That's, that's something that has changed over the years from the Stanley Morgans of the world. The uh, size of the wide receivers are more on the Alvin Harper type stature and Carl Pickens, along with, and the whole group that Tennessee has right now is on that same structure. Tennessee only two receivers, double tight ends this time. They give it off to Graham, and he tries to weave a little bit outside there and got some running room, as you see. Up close to the 45-yard line, hit by R.W. McQuarters, who is a freshman. Can't stress how young this team is for Oklahoma State. 17 freshmen have played, nine have started. Wow. At one time or another. Peyton Manning now looking at a first down situation. Fakes to his tail back and fires beautifully. To Peerless Price. Play went for 13 yards. Peerless Price, one of those players that they thought a little bit about red shirting but decided not to because he's been so good in practice just a play action pass an out route to the field if you'll take a look at the velocity on that ball that's a big league throw folks <laughs> yes it is peyton manning with another first down and 10 situation in oklahoma state territory maybe checking off appears to be at the line here eric lane is in now at the fullback spot and he gets the call and not much going there Oklahoma State waiting for him. Javon Langford made the stop. Missy down on the field. Well, Jay, this is the energy man. Walter Slater was the captain of the 46 team. But Walter, you spend how many years as a ball? As a ball, three years. 41, 42, and 46. See, he, play, he went off for a little stint in the war. Yeah, we had to fight a battle. Okay, so tell Now, you were a tailback, but, you know, it's different when you played being a tailback. What did you guys do? Well, a tailback did everything. They passed, they ran, they kicked, they played safety man on defense. And just about the whole ball of wax. Now tell me, coming all the way out from Florida, you live in Florida, from Rhode Island, what is it like coming back for homecoming games with some of these guys? Oh, it's nice to see the guys. I usually see them once a year, not all of them, but different ones show up every year. Of course, what amazes me is this crowd. One like this in the 40s. I'd be scared to play in here <laughs> Well, you're staying in good shape, and I kidded uh, Leonard Kaufman. You said he was the meanest man around. Some of you guys, I think, could still play today, maybe in the weight room a little bit longer. No, I don't in the weight room. I do a lot of tennis. I did and, uh, bicycle riding, swimming, and things like that. Well, you guys look great, and thanks for coming down and joining oh, us. I'm glad to be here. All right. A lot of thanks great so. guys from a great era back in Tennessee. All right, guys. All right. You saw Jay Graham pick up a little yardage there from tailback. Manning back now, getting a little pressure, and finally is going to be dropped. One of the few times this year that he has been dropped. Little flag down, and that looks like holding when it's back there. Lorenzo Green was the man who was putting the pressure on Peyton and got through. So one or two offensive linemen will be spoken to about that. Tennessee is facing their first punting situation. They're in Oklahoma State Territory at the 41-yard line. And they will be punting the football. Binion, Larry Binion is the punter. Larry gets off a high, high, high kick. A signal for a fair catch. And it got into the end zone. He stepped away from it, hoping that it would get into the end zone. Tennessee could not quite get there. It's good for 41 yards. Excellent effort by Binion, though. We're in the first quarter of play. Oklahoma State 
and Tennessee. The balls are up seven to nothing. Ball stalled on their last drive. They did get in earlier and they have scored on their first possession, Condridge, in every ball game. That's very impressive. That's what you strive to do. That's uh, the objective of the offensive unit. Take it in school. All right, Tony Jones for Oklahoma State gives off to his tailback. Not much there before he is knocked down by Jonathan Brown, who's in there defensively now. The Vols have had a little bit of trouble in what's called the orange zone. Tennessee has attempted 12 field goals, and that's three more than any other SEC team. That means some of the drives have been stalling. Tennessee in, in recent years has been extremely effective in what's called the orange zone from the 20 on in. Of course, that time they punted from well outside the 20, but still the drive did uh, fizzle out. Tony Jones before this homecoming crowd here in Knoxville on a beautiful day. A delay to his tailback, and he's getting a little bit of yardage. Second effort got him across the uh, 25 to about the 27. Bill Duff made the stop that time. So Tennessee already has gone to a lot of a uh, lot of people in this football game. Kindridge, I believe somebody told me they were dressing 112 today. Wow. And about 19 of them are wearing double numbers. That, so well, that that would have to be. Fourth <laughs> quarter, we may get some interesting calls here. Thompson, uh, six carries now for 19 yards. Jones is checking off at the line. The crowd trying to get into it a bit on a third down and three situation. Thompson not going to make it. He's met about a yard shy. And Billy Barron, I think, was the first man to get there. Billy Barron and Bill Duff. Stood him up, and that's quite a chore because he is a very, very strong running back. Just uh, your basic single back running play, and if I mean if Oklahoma State thinks they're just going to pound the ball at the Tennessee defense all day and, and, and move it, they're I think they're mistaken. They're going to have to mix it up. They're going to have to run play action pass. They might even have to throw a trick play in there. But just running from tackle to tackle all day long is it's going to make for a long day. All right, Ivy is standing back on about the 15 yard line and Sean Summers waiting in deep safety for Tennessee. Another nice high kick. Sean signals for the fair catch. This punt covers 41 yards. So the balls take over once again on offense leading seven to nothing getting fairly late now in the first quarter with a minute 29 remaining. Good shot of the massive crowd here today in Neyland Stadium. Temperatures in the low 80s, very, very little wind. A little warm, actually, on the far side for the folks in the sun. On this side, press box side, under the shade, it's a very, very comfortable day. Field about half covered now with a shade from the press box. Manning, with a long count, goes back to his tailback. And Jay Graham, not much running room there. Alama Bailey, who's been perhaps the most active of the defenders from his linebacker post, Made the stop for the Cowboys. Just a basic little eye formation lead run by Jay Graham, and he has the option to hit it inside or outside. It depends on the block of his tackle. The okay, guy's protecting the ball, though, Condor. That's protect, a good sign. He's been somebody's gotten in his ear a little bit, so that's that shouldn't be a problem the remainder of the season. Five wideouts out of the shotgun. He has to hurry his throw and. Manning throws a little bit low intended for Joey Kent. Pretty good rush on a couple occasions now by Oklahoma State. Big number 96 in your picture there is Jay Grisfield. Take a look at the pressure, Condridge. This is just a drop back and a timing pass that needs to be thrown on time. Once that doesn't happen, everything gets a little bit off kilter, and you can see Peyton Manning there just trying to get rid of it and line up for the next play. He's two of four now in the air. Got 24 yards. He needs 54 to surpass his total from all of last year. Manning has to set his back out of the shotgun now, looking for a little more protection back there as they keep him back in. And still he's rushed, but he gets it away, and Kent makes a nice catch. Joey Kent, who can catch with people hanging on him. 
pulls it down for the balls. But it's not quite enough for the apparently for the first down. It's going to be a little bit short, so it'll be fourth and one. And Tennessee is going to have to go into punt formation. Tell you the Oklahoma State defense is rising to the occasion after that first drive. They've stopped the Tennessee offense uh, on uh, two consecutive times. Deep to receive the Binion punt is Andre Richardson. And he's going to let it go. It takes an Oklahoma State type bounce, and Tennessee downs it just across the 20, about the 21 yard line. And Oklahoma State will put it in play. Punt covered 39 yards. Binion is getting a terrific hang time. All right, the Oklahoma State Cowboys will put it in play at the beginning of the second quarter. Time has expired in quarter number one. Tennessee leading by a score of seven to nothing over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Condridge, is it a combination of Tennessee's offense being a little lethargic or Oklahoma State playing a little better defense than they expected? Well, I, I think it's a little bit of both, but I think it's more so that Oklahoma State's playing a little better defense. I also believe that Tennessee has to widen it up and spread out a little bit and make Oklahoma State make decisions. Uh, when you go three wides and you play in a three-man front, you've got to make decisions. And, uh, you know, right now, the Tennessee offense is of the mindset that we can line up and run the ball at them and uh, be successful. And on the first drive, it was very successful. The last two drives, it has not been. Well, there's Coach Fulmer talking to some of the offensive uh, football players. Rushing yardage in the first quarter, Tennessee with 52, Oklahoma State with 14, Tennessee 32 passing, zero for Oklahoma State. Total yardage, Tennessee 84, and Oklahoma State 14. So we got a case here where the defense is perhaps playing a little better than the offense for Tennessee. Although the balls are leading in the ball game, somebody jumped off sides out there. We've got flags, and we'll have a penalty coming up here. David Thompson carrying the ball from tailback George Kidd, Tennessee linebacker knocked him down. Jimmy Harper is the referee, and as you heard, penalty against the defense, the defense being Tennessee. Down to, on the field, let's check in again with Missy. Well, John Michaels, great offensive lineman here back in 1951 championship team, also coached with the Vikings. How many years, John? 27 years, 27 Miss. 27 years. Um, tell me about coming back to this area of East Tennessee. You're not from this area. No, not originally. From, originally from Philadelphia. We decided a long time ago we are going to come back down here. Finally found a lot up on uh, uh, Cobbley Knob up in, out of Southern Gatlinburg and moved in in December. I've died and gone to heaven. It's great here. And tell me, you coached quite a few balls also in the pros. Quite a few. Uh, Tim Irwin is primary. Uh, they referred to him as my son up there. <laughs> and uh, Bernard Daphne was another one. Fouad Revez was another one. Yeah, we had quite a few of them there. Great homecoming. Glad you moved back to East Tennessee. Glad to have you back. Thank you, Miss. Okay, guys. All right. Thank you, Missy. A uh, completed pass, the first one of the day for Oklahoma State to Willie Grissom. Scott Gallion made the tackle, but there was a flag on the play, and it's going to go against Oklahoma State so they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot here in this first half of play they've made two or three mistakes that were what you might say untimely there's coach uh, Bob Simons of Oklahoma State in his first year after successful assistant coaching jobs at West Virginia and Colorado he has seen some championship football while coaching at Colorado. So Nate Jones, after the penalty is marked off, tosses another one out here in the flat. And this one's a little too high, intended for David Thompson coming out of the backfield. Of course, some teams have had success with that play against Tennessee this year, Condridge. Well, I tell you what, if this ball's down just a little bit, it's, success it's successful also. Uh, it's just a little flat pattern. And uh, it's, it's a pattern that can be very consistent and successful. But you have to practice it, and you have to be able to throw the ball on time. You can't be late with a flat pass. What you've got to do with a flat pass is get the ball to the receiver so he has time enough to catch it, turn up the field, and run. From field level, you've got to look at the Oklahoma State team as they break out of the huddle. So Nate Jones has a couple of receivers out here on the right, one at the top of the screen. And looking at a second down and 11 situation, he's not satisfied with what's been called or the formation, and he calls a timeout. 
I'd like to remind you that next week's game, Tennessee and Arkansas, will also be available across the state on pay-per-view and in Arkansas. So check with your cable company. Same procedure that you went through for this ball game. The game from Fayetteville will be available on pay-per-view as the balls travel into Arkansas territory next week. A lot of the ex-players are back. And they're uh, down on the field. Missy has already talked to two or three, and we'll talk to some more. There you see the situation. 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central for that kickoff next week in Fayetteville. Tennessee's last trip over there, they went to Little Rock, but the Arkansas Razorbacks play some in Little Rock, and I uh, think they're beginning to play more and more of their home games in Fayetteville on campus. I think the trend is starting that way. Um, I think Alabama's going to start playing their games in Tuscaloosa. And, you know, I think that's good. I, I'm all for playing on the college campus and, and making it a college event and being right there on campus. At, uh, Ole Miss, uh, Condridge, and Mississippi State used to play quite a few games in Jackson. Now they're getting away from that, playing primarily all their games at home. We got 14.09 to go before halftime. And there will be a lot of halftime festivities here surrounding homecoming. Balls are leading in this one, seven to nothing. Oklahoma State looking at second and 11. Tony Jones back to throw. And got a little time and threw behind the intended receiver, David Thompson. Jones completing uh, fewer than 35% of his passes, so he just doesn't throw that often. Scott Gallion was the man defending that time. Now they're looking at a definite passing situation, Condridge, and when you've got a, a running team in a situation like this, the defense should be able to turn loose. There's a penalty. Th this is that penalty about being in the huddle too long for so many seconds and coming out. Uh, so basically, it's too many men on the field. But, we have uh, a violation this, of substitution this, I don't rules. understand this one yet. did not leave the game within three seconds time. Five yards offense. Jimmy Harper explains it. It's a it's a discretion of the of the referee, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. There's a there's a span of three seconds or something like that when the player has to get out of there. So now those steamboats are Mississippi. <laughs> One Mississippi, <laughs> two Mississippi. How far long is that? <laughs> yeah. Where's the stopwatch? Yeah. Jones is now 0 for 3 passing. And Oklahoma State's been penalized four times already for 30 yards here in the first half of play. And we've still got 14 minutes to go in this first half. Jones rolling out this time, throwing on the run, and led the receiver too far out of bounds. Tennessee was in pretty good shape defensively anyway. It was intended for Willie Grissom. Wide out, and Oklahoma State will be facing another punting situation. Greg Ivey will be back. The punt and Sean Summers will be back to receive for Tennessee. Balls up seven to nothing here in Knoxville before 95,000 in the homecoming crowd. Well, I noticed a little offensive meeting over there, and I think it was words of encouragement, rather vigorously. Is that what you call it? <laughs> uh, so let's <laughs> we'll have to see and wait and see after this punt what transpires. Oklahoma State 11 plays, nine runs, and two passes. Wow, good punt. John Summers takes it right at the 30. Gets by one man, tries to get to the sidelines. Not much running room there. He's got nailed down with a face mask. Kevin Williams, the strong safety, will be the man who's guilty. That punt covered 54 yards, and the return was 11 yards. We're definitely looking at a terrific punter we have here a today. Personal foul. Face mask. That's Greg Ivey. Greg Ivey is. Head on into the run. The first down. Little face mask right here. And that's of the 15-yard persuasion, I think. That means he did not turn loose the <laughs> face mask. So it's a big penalty against Oklahoma State. Puts Tennessee in great field position. And let's see if Coach Fulmer's discussion on the sideline with the offense pays off. Three wide receivers out this time for Tennessee. Joey Kent's here at the bottom of the screen, who's Manning's perhaps favorite receiver, although he's thrown to as many as 10 in one game. And they run the ball right down the middle with Jay Graham. 
picks up a little yardage before Lewis Adams from linebacker position on the left side made the stop. Actually, that play is designed to not have a backside linebacker blitz, and that was a backside linebacker blitz, so nobody is assigned to block him. So that's when you have to become an athlete, and that's your man. You avoid him or try to run through a tackle. Graham's got 60 yards now on 11 carries, and he gets a little bit more yardage this time. Not enough for a first down, however. Lorenzo Green made the stop. If you'll take a look, if we get a replay on this one, the offensive lineman had a, just a surge. If you'll take a look, watch the offensive lineman to the outside. If Jay stays outside, they're still pushing him. They're still pushing him away. And uh, that's just a great surge by the offensive lineman. Look, look, a hole was outside. Jay chose the option to go inside, but uh, that's he sees differently than I do up here. It's a lot easier up here. Tennessee's one out of three in third down conversions, and they uh, fail on this one. Big time. Jason, uh, Javon Langford, the top defender on this Oklahoma State team. There he is, big number 58, was right on top of that one. Take a look, Condridge. This play was just not, this was interrupted from the start. There was no place for Jay Graham to go. He tried to make a, a break outside, and uh, Javon Langford just uh, made a great play. Beat, took an inside move and just destroyed that run. Tennessee, 22 plays, 18 run, four pass. And Binion gets it high and deep. Is it going to go in? No, it takes a terrific bounce. Tell you what, this kid is good at that. That's a couple of times this year that he has done that, and he's also almost done it two or three other times. John Emery was the man downfield to down it. Punt was good for 35 yards, but that's one of those misleading ones when you look in the paper the next day and see a punt for 35 yards actually right. is far more effective than some 50 or 60 yarders would be well what they didn't tell you was an L wedge and it was two feet from the pin <laughs> you know, that, right. one, that one just kind of stopped and checked up right there that that was a good punt Tennessee's offense is sputtering here in the first half and official timeout official timeout Jimmy Harper let you know the officials call this timeout and it comes with 11.52 to go in the first half. Tennessee's offense not performing to the expectations of Coach Fulmer and to the crowd here either. Well, I tell Average you, starting field position, Condridge, for Oklahoma State, 15-yard line. Wow. I tell you, it, the longer you let people stay in the game that everybody and you also feel shouldn't be in the game with you, the more confidence they get, and the tougher is going to get on you. Uh, when you get opportunities to put the ball in the end zone, you have to take advantage of every one of those. Doesn't matter who you're playing. Down on the field, let's check with Missy. Old time act back together. 11 years ago, Reggie and Jana. How's it coming back for homecoming? Oh, it's beautiful. Everybody, 95,000. Uh, get a chance to see the game and enjoy all your okay. friends. Okay, now, can you guys still do something for us? Yes. Yeah. All right, <laughs> thank you. Go through it. I know that Reggie Coleman also sings the national anthem, Lady Ball Game. Jana has a gymnastics center. Guys, you're still there. Put him to shame. Great job, Jana and Reggie. Woo! I think you all need to go back on the other side and get this crowd going. Yeah, okay, go back. Boom, to the boom, baby. Hey, hey that's you, Bob. Okay. Thank you, Missy. Everybody having a good time on the homecoming, except the Tennessee offense right now. Oklahoma State with the football second down and about five yards to go a little bit of running room for David Thompson as he goes over his right guard and pretty close to a first down not quite there I don't think stop was made by George Kidd and Scott Gallion two Tennessee linebackers converged on him maybe close enough for a measurement Jimmy Harper signals for a timeout and I guess that's what they're going to do 11 minutes and uh, Eight seconds remaining here in the first half of play. What Brown do you think, sort of sitting back waiting for something to happen here. I think he made it by about two inches. I'm going to say he's two inches short. Okay. All right. You win, Codrick. <laughs> first down. <style. laughs> okay. I should never, <laughs> never guess against the quarterback, huh? Well, you get lucky sometimes. First down and 10 to go for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Their colors are orange and black, but as you can see, it's a different shade of orange than the Vols wear. Tony Jones, the quarterback, tailback behind him is Thompson. 
Got three receivers out this time. Unusual set for Oklahoma State. They run out of it though and Tennessee missed the tackle and he picked up a first down. Deron Jenkins finally brings down David Thompson. He bounced off a couple of people that time, Condridge. That, uh, that's where that 5'8", 200-pound body comes in handy. David takes a great, I mean, he takes two good shots there, but it's good balance, good feet, and being having that low center of gravity with 200 pounds, he's a strong running back, and he just doesn't quit. His legs keep moving, as you see right there. He continues, he runs through tackles. Another first down for Oklahoma State. The ball out at the 27-yard line, their own 27. They're trailing Tennessee 7 to nothing. They send Thompson to the corner again. Tennessee's waiting this time. Nothing doing. There's Leonard Little, one of the first men in, along with George Kidd. Leonard Little has had a couple of big plays in this ball game. It'll be a second down situation now for Oklahoma State. And roughly seven yards to go for a first. Part of the sun-soaked crowd here at Neyland. Tony Jones takes a long count. And hands off to Thompson. Thompson trying to turn the corner. Actually, he slipped and fell. Then Tennessee pinned him down short of the first down. He was going to be about two yards shy of the first. Well, if Tony Jones did check off, he made a great check because if uh, David Thompson doesn't lose his footing there, that's a first down easy and probably a bigger play than that. Thompson's got 12 carries now for 45 yards. Is that All Andre Richardson? Andre Richardson carrying the ball that time. Oh, well, is it? Yeah, that five looked like an eight. But we got it straight now. All right, it's second down now. Or third down and two yards to go. So here's a big down for the Tennessee defense. Third and two. They've got him trapped in the backfield. It's going to be close. He's right at the first down marker, it appears. Raymond Austin hitting Andre Richardson. Where they marked it, if they put the front of the ball there, he's about a half a yard short. Well, about two inches short. Got one of those right foot marks that time. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... They're going to have to measure again. David Thompson and Andre Richardson. It's short, but this is just a lead. Take a look at it here. Lead back block, eye back, just following you blocking. And uh, fullback did a great job there. Almost was a little bit late on the motion. Think we're going to be about a little bit short. All right. Uh, David Thompson and Andre Richardson have combined for 227 yards per game. A coverage, actually, this team is 21st in the nation in rushing Russia? the football. Their problem has been defense. They've given up a lot of yards, over 600 yards to Nebraska, over 600 to Wyoming. But they can run the football. All right. They're going to go for it. And it's going to be very close. Fourth down well, in inches. They got it. Tony Jones on a keeper. Was that a good call, Condridge? If you're down seven to nothing on the road before 95,000, do you do that? When, when everybody in the world doesn't think you can win, I think so. I think it gives your team confidence, and and you should be able to make uh, that type of yardage. And they did a good job right there, just quarterback sneak. Tony Jones gets underneath. The one good thing I did see him do was get down. Most guys that are his size try to go up and over. And once you leave your feet and expose yourself to those linebackers, you're going to get popped. All right, a little bit of a drive going here for Oklahoma State, the eighth play in this drive, and it's complete. Right at the sidelines to Sean Love. They'll pull it in shy of their first down, but he picked up some nice yardage on it. Take a look. Hey, this Oklahoma State team is getting confidence. That's a Tony threw a great pass there. That's just a little sprint out pass. And Tony Jones comes out and uh, just delivers properly. Wide open receiver. Just good execution right there. Sean Love pulling it down. It's about three yards shy of a first down. Third down. Second down, rather, correction. And now it's going to be a first down as they cross midfield. Oklahoma State offense, as Condridge points out, gaining some confidence here. Ron Green and Steve Johnson made the stop for Tennessee. But they're moving the ball. Isn't it amazing sometimes what two inches can do? 
I mean, you, you, you get make a play on fourth down, and all of a sudden this looks like a different team. They're moving the ball. They've had positive yardage on every play since that fourth down try. And uh, we, the, the onus is on the Tennessee defense now to bow up and stop. Crowd needs to get in this game. They're sitting back quietly right now. Here is Jones back to throw and broken up by Deron Jenkins. Nice defensive play by Deron Jenkins intended for Terrence Richardson. Well, Deron Jenkins did a great job of finding the ball. In fact, I think he he looked at the receiver's eyes and when he looked for the ball, he also looked back and great fake there by Tony Jones. He didn't have a guy wide open, but he had enough room to throw it there and if you'll take a look right here Deron Jenkins makes a good play that is just a good defensive play in coverage second down at the 49 yard line 10 yards to go quick pass deflected at the line of scrimmage intended for Sean Love may have been Steve White who got a hand on it Leonard Little was it Leonard it was Leonard Little So it brings up a big play here, a big play for Oklahoma State, big for Tennessee's defense. Third down and 10 yards to go. On third down, they're 0 for 5. Did make it on a fourth down try, though. Right. Ball almost at midfield, about a yard into Tennessee territory, closer to the 49. Third down, 10 to go. Jones. Toss is out here on the flat, and it's going to be a first down and more to David Thompson, but a flag is down. Flag down on the play. Probably Thompson, roughing the passer. Thompson's finally brought down around the 31-yard line. It covered 19 yards on that play. Probably right. going to get a rough in the passer penalty there. They spotted at the 32. Here's we have a personal foul. Rough in the passer. 15-yard penalty. Added on to the end of the run. Mm. First down. Take a look. This is just a little flare pass, and it's actually a flare screen. It's a delayed flare screen, and uh, David Thompson just follows his blockers. But take a look. He he takes some shots, but it's I mean at 5'8", 200 pounds, he is taking these tacklers, and if they don't wrap up on him, he's running right through their arm tackling. Those secondary people are all in the 180, 85 pound range, and he's they're bouncing off of him. There's the roughing the passer. It's on Leonard Little. And that's basically because it was a shot to the head. Wasn't so much that it was that late, it was just a shot to the head. Oklahoma State has called timeout after the penalty. They're in good position right now with the ball on the 17 yard line, by far and away their biggest threat of this ball game. If they go on and punch it in here for a score, we may have a football game. Tennessee came in here favored by 34 points. And as we alluded to earlier, that's a type game that a coach in the favorite role worries about because you're facing a team that has nothing to lose. They're going to let it all hang out. They're going to gamble, which we've already seen Oklahoma State do. And you give them a little, uh, as Condridge pointed out, a little breathing room, give them a little excitement, and you get yourself some trouble. Tennessee has gone over and spoken with the coach as a unit. As Smokey tries to whip up a little enthusiasm here. Crowd kind of sitting back, not making they a whole lot of noise. Yeah, this the Tennessee defense has got to do something to get this crowd involved. Because I mean, if you had told me that Oklahoma State would be able to run a play on the 18 yard line and get the snap count off easily I would have said no but more crowd noise is not even bothering there it is oh, that's that's a big that's, defensive play that's different this is the 14th play in this drive covering about 79 yards it's taken over five minutes Tyrone Hines made the stop that time of David Thompson Tyrone is, is a, a big hitter toss sweep with a single back uh, David Thompson tries to cut it back the pursuit he ran right into it out of Brownsville Tennessee as we said in the pregame he's a key today because Oklahoma State does run the football so they're looking now at a second down and actually lost about a yard so it's second on 11 does he put it up here no he tosses outside Tennessee trailing it 
And they bring him down but a little bit of positive yardage before Tory Noel number nine makes the stop for the volunteers. David Thompson runs that sweep quite well. Tory Noel was all that was left between that and a touchdown. If you'll take a look at this play. This is a toss sweep. Everybody is blocked inside. If you'll take a look, everybody. It, it, David Thompson is to the outside. After that, there's nobody there. That could have very well been a touchdown. Jonathan Brown ran by him that time, but he was inside and couldn't do much about it. There's Thompson's stats to date. It's third down and seven. Third and seven. Ball on the 14-yard line. Big, big play here for Oklahoma State. They throw in the flat, complete first down and more. It'll be first and goal. It was to the fullback trailing out there in the flat, Jeff Grenier. And Tyrone Hines and Steve Johnson made the stop for Tennessee, but it, it's a first down. Just a little flat pattern. Good job of breaking the tackle right there to get in the first down. That's positive yardage, getting the first down, finishing off the run. Tennessee wraps up the tackle there. He would be a short of the first down. Four minutes and 55 seconds to go and what's a rather stunning first half. Tennessee leading seven to nothing. Many people would have thought a lot more. Pitch, fumbled, and recovered by Oklahoma State. Leonard Little on the hit. Little caused it. And it's remarkable that Oklahoma State was able to retain that football. There's Leonard. Ooh. That was just <laughs> one of those quickness plays. You know, you're supposed to flash fake the ball and then come down the line and run the option. And before Tone A. Jones could get the ball back under his control, Leonard Little was right in his face. Oklahoma State's had the football for seven minutes and 30 seconds in the stride. They still haven't scored. They're looking now at a second down at about 15. Here's a delay in the middle. Tennessee waiting for it. Pretty well defended that time. Andre Richardson running out of the tailback spot. Ron Green was one of the key defenders there. Big number 55. Shane Burton also in on the stop. So he picked up a couple of yards looking now at third down and 13. After this long, long drive, I don't know if they would even settle for a field goal. They might just keep trying to drive it into the end zone. Depends on what they do on this one, though, right here. Third on down. Play. Third down. 13 to go for a touchdown. Here's the pass. Too high. Almost intercepted. Jeff Grenier was the intended receiver, very much like uh, the play a couple of plays ago, Condridge. The only difference between that play and the play before, it was a fullback flat pattern, except this time it was to the field. The last time it was to the short side of the field. And when you throw this pattern to the field, there's always somebody outside, which right there should have been an interception. Steve Johnson, number 34, the man who almost cradled it in. And so they will go for the uh, field goal right here. Lawson Vaughn, who's hit 11 out of his last 12, puts it in the air. No good. And we jinxed wow. him, I guess. Wow. No good. He had hit 11 out of 12 inside the 45-yard line before that kick. And as you can see, he's a little mystified by the miss himself. So Tennessee dodges the bullet. Think about it. When you're on the road, you can't be close. Hit it down the middle. <laughs> Don't give him a chance. <laughs> I think he thought it was a little bit inside the post there, but... Tennessee offense has got to be get fired up right here. They've got to take over this turnover, which is a missed field goal, and make something positive happen. Time of possession there was nine minutes for Oklahoma State. Jay Graham, not much there. And you hear the reaction of the crowd. Josh Green made the stop. I think the crowd would like to see it in the air, Condridge. Well, I, I think what they'd like to see is the, the sticks move. And right now, the Tennessee offense is not moving him by running the football. But I do know what's in the mind of David Cutcliffe, and I know he's got some plans. I mean, it's, it's, it's all in the game plan. Uh, play action pass will come soon, and then spreading them out. They're, they're seeing what they're, they're going to do to him. And they complete a pass to Joey Kent. He is knocked down shy of the 35-yard line. 
by Jermaine Birdlow. You know, Coach Cutcliffe has a, a, a definite plan in mind, and this is just a, a drop back pass, and you're taking advantage of the short side coverage with just a flat and a curl. And if the uh, underneath coverage covers the flat, you throw to the curl. Ball at the 34, first down and 10 to go for Tennessee. The offense has sputtered so far, except in the one drive. And Manning's pass a little bit high, intended for Marcus Nash, who is from Oklahoma. One of about four balls on this team from the state of Oklahoma. Ray Austin, Marcus Nash, Jonathan Brown, and Deron Robinson. Big play here. Second down, 10 to go. There's Manning Stetz. A little bit out of sync on that last one. Got plenty of time, plenty of time, and Oklahoma State covered Jay Graham out in the flat beautifully. They were anticipating that when it appeared all the way. And so Tennessee fails to connect again on a first down attempt here. Jay Graham was out there with a the defender all over him. Manning probably did not make a great decision. A, they there. were looking for a holding play there. But, you know, until that offensive player declares what he's doing, he's a potential blocker. And a defensive man is just going to play him as such. And that means he can put, put his hands on him. Another third down situation. Tennessee one of four on conversions here. Manning appears to be checking off. Brings the back end real tight behind him. So we're looking at a throw here. And he fires to Joey Kent. Big play. Joey Kent into Oklahoma's territory before Trent Fisher from free safety brings him down at just about the 45-yard line of Oklahoma State. Good now, for 17. If you think Peyton Manning doesn't understand the offense, if you saw he was directing traffic before this play was even in, in it got started, he was showing his receiver, Joey Kent, that the blitz was coming, and he wanted him to read blitz, which is a hot route, which is just what he threw, and it uh, was a big play. Manning back again. Comes out of the pocket. Going to run. Go down, Peyton. Good move. Oh. <laughs> Sliding. Was that about 97,000 in unison? Go down, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Get on that grass. <laughs> well, they're, they're, trying, no they're executing their no-huddle offense, which, you know, a sophomore quarterback like Peyton Manning, who's been under the gun, can handle this. Got a big rush. Has to throw it out to Jay Graham. Made a beautiful catch and dives for what may be a first down. That was nice by Manning. That was nice by Graham. That's what the weight room can do for you. You know, when, you, when you're 6'5", 215, possibly, I'd say Peyton's going to get up to about 230. You can do that. A, an arm tackle is not going to bring you down. And this is just speed, speed, speed. And they give him the first down. That's as you see, effort. he just stretches for it there. An excellent effort. Ball at the 34-yard line of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Tennessee leading 7 to nothing and trying to drive here in the final couple of minutes of the first half. Manning in the pocket. Fires beautifully. Joey Kent, the money receiver. 21 yards on that play. A little more hurry up, and this is just a, an, an option route which gives the, the wide receiver the option to sit in the first hole that he sees or the second. Whichever Clock. one the quarterback uh, hooks up with him on, that's where he throws the football. Clock starts again. A minute 16. It was stopped for the movement of the chain. Manning pump fake. Fires. Touchdown. Greg Tyler. Andy McCullough. Check it. Andy McCullough. Okay. 88, not 80. This is just a drop back pattern. And what this is, is a flat route and a corner route. If they jump the flat, which they did, the corner route's open. If you drop back and cover the corner, you throw to the flat. It's just a simple read to the short side of the field. And uh, the Tennessee offense executed perfectly. Jeff Hall will attempt the extra point. The spot is perfect. The kick is up, and it's good. And Tennessee leads 14 to nothing. Here now with uh, about a minute 10 to go in the first half of play. Now that drive makes this game a little different animal than what it really is because 
the Oklahoma State offense did a terrific job last time, and we noted out at the beginning one of the keys was to have sustained offensive drives, which takes the ball out of the hands of the Tennessee offense. Drive covered 80. Nine plays took 210. There's the culmination. You see the flat right underneath and the corner right behind it. You pick one or the other. They've got to cover one or the other. And once they make a commitment, you go opposite. Beautiful stretch here by McCullough and pulls it in. Andy McCullough is another one of those young receivers you're going to be hearing an awful lot about in the future. Great athlete. He was an outstanding basketball player in high school, too. Next game for Tennessee will be on the road at Arkansas and it'll start at three o'clock Eastern two o'clock Central and will be live on video seats. Contact your local cable company early in the week to place your order for that game. That drives six passes and three runs for Tennessee. Coming out of there is R.W. McWhorter and not much running room Tennessee as they have done all year. They've covered punts and kickoffs quite well. That was Greg Johnson on the special teams for Tennessee along with Anthony Hampton making the stop. There's Tennessee's uh, scoring drive nine plays 80 yards took uh, two minutes and 10 seconds to get on the board with Manning to McCullough the last 12 yards for the touchdown and then Hall's extra point. I know dad Carl Johnson's got a big grin on his face during the stands with his son just making a play like that. Uh, One of my old teammates Carl Johnson. Son Greg. Tone Jones escapes the pressure, but can't find much running room as Tennessee swarms on him. Shane Burton was the first ball there. The clock is stopped at 51 seconds now remaining in the first half of play. Jimmy Harper says Tennessee called the timeout. Once again, we'd like to remind you that the best of the Big Orange Home Video Collection series. Right now, what's available for you is volume three of the Great Ball Running Backs, and it's available for only $19.99 at participating J.C. Penney stores all across Tennessee, or you may call the 800 number on your screen, 1-800-529-4500. And Tennessee has had some truly great running backs. That would be a nice gift for a friend. Might even be a nice Christmas present. So look for it right now. Volume three of the great running backs here at Tennessee. Condridge, who was the best of the running backs when you played? Would have to be Haskell Stanback, without a doubt. He was uh, our go-to guy. And uh, after he left, they, they switched and put uh, Stanley Morgan back there along with Mike Gales. So... But Haskell Stanback to me would be our best guy during my tenure. Thompson for Oklahoma State has had 15 rushes in the first half for 55 yards. And Graham 17 for 62. Here's the pitch. They try to come wide and Tennessee anticipating a pass almost let him get out of there. David Thompson. Running with the football runs out of bounds to stop the clock 43 Tennessee laying back Condridge expecting the throw I guess and almost uh, turned the corner and had he been able to make one more step in bounds he might have been gone here 16 yards on the carry. I would have liked to see that because there was a guy with number one on his back chasing him even though he defended him and he turned around and started chasing that would have been a good foot race. Leonard Little wears number one. All right, 43 seconds to go on the first down. Do they put it in the air here? Tennessee jumped off sides. It's a free play. Incomplete intended for Terrence Richardson, but looked like the right end that Tennessee jumped off sides. We'll wait for the official ruling here from Jimmy Harper. Defensive team, violation neutral zone, five yard penalty. That was Jonathan Brown. A little offside. Oklahoma State coaching staff looking on intently here in the final 38 seconds of this game. Their team still in it, even though they trail 14 to nothing. This Tennessee's offense finally came came alive in that last series. A very impressive drive. Prior to that, it had been uh, not that impressive. Oklahoma State with the football. 
trailing 14 to nothing wide pitch out Tennessee trailing it all the way and nothing nothing going to happen here except a loss of yardage Steve what? White number 64 one thing Tony needs to understand I'm sure he'll get coached up on this but as an option quarterback you can never pitch too soon even if you're reverse pivoting you've got to get in the face of that defensive end and make him commit to you you can't let him play you and the pitch man 18 seconds now remaining in the first half of play as the timeout has been called 14 to nothing the balls on top Tennessee three and one on the season with the only loss being at Gainesville of course next week they hit the road to Arkansas that'll be a tough trip glad you're watching this video seat production good to have you with us here in Knoxville under absolutely perfect weather conditions homecoming 95 you've seen and heard from some of the former balls and you'll hear from more of them many have dropped by the booth here to say hello to Condridge former teammates I'm looking forward to seeing quite a few more at the T club after the game part of the homecoming crowd here in the sunshine Oklahoma State's entire team came over to uh, get some words of wisdom from the head coach and let's see what they do you got to assume they're going to put it up in the air here with 18 seconds to go and trailing by a 14 to nothing score they've got three wideouts this time Tony Jones got a little bit of time and throws long it'll be intercepted intercepted by Raymond Austin playing center field saw it coming waited for it all the way and it was though it was thrown to him Jones just turned it loose and Austin I guess uh, read it perfectly Conridge well with too deep coverage you can't throw down the middle without stretching the safeties and when you don't send anybody deep up the sidelines you don't make those two inside safeties cover anybody they sit back there and play center field and they'll pick that one off every time the only way that's not an interception if they drop it Raymond from Lawton Oklahoma all right let's see if Tennessee keeps it on the ground here or tries to strike through the air with 11 seconds to go they're up 14 to nothing and they're going to go to the air Peyton Manning had a man in his face fires to Joey Kent with four seconds three seconds they stopped the clock now Trent Fisher made the stop of Joey Kent kept showing a lot of guts there Condridge he went up Great knowing point. he was going to get hit 26 well, yards there's never been any doubt about Joey's toughness he's a guy that's going to go across the middle and make the play this is just a a, a a crossing route from the short side of the field coming to the wide side now Peyton Manning takes a pretty good shot there but he's still big and strong enough to get this ball out there and Joey Kent makes the play completion of the play that's exactly what everybody wants to see pressure on Manning that time from the right end Joey Crossfield with and where Peyton is it looks like we might be trying to field goal here Peyton is standing on the sidelines the ball is on the at the length of the football across the 35 they'll call it the 36 yard line they will spot it looks like on about the 43 so we're looking at a 53 yard effort here by Jeff Hall this could change this game around dram dramatically because 17 to nothing is a little different than 14 but this game hasn't been a 17 to nothing half so far long attempt got the distance good wow whoa great kick and there's a happy happy freshman red shirt freshman Jeff Hall well you need to give him a shot like that Condridge someday right. it might win a football game and it always helps to have the confidence in your mind that I've done this before so what he what what coach Fulmer did right there was a great positive statement and it will definitely help this team later down the road well there's absolutely no doubt about it being good as you saw on our excellent camera angle there 
Let's uh, go down to Missy Kane. Missy. Coach Fuller, once again, you guys came out strong, scoring your first series. Then did you take a little nap or what happened? Well, I think Oklahoma State had something to do that. One, we couldn't get the ball back there, there for a while. And basically, we threw away two or three scoring opportunities with field position. Uh, a lot of movement inside, a lot of funny things. Once we got it figured out, we did better. We got to go in and get a plan because they're doing a lot of things, running linebackers through and some things are bothering us. I think we'll get it fixed. That should give us momentum back. That was a good, good end of the half. we got to start the second half the same way. Last question. I guess Kent McCullough got you guys jump-started with about two minutes to go, too. Great play. Pardon me? Kent McCullough, they really came Andy, out strong. Yeah, Andy, Andy, Kent, Andy really McCullough. Andy McCullough, yeah. Yeah, the receivers are doing well when we're getting the ball to them, giving Peyton time to throw it. All right, thank you so much, Coach. They're up right now. We'll go to halftime. A lot of halftime activities to cover this game. All right, guys. Okay, thank you, Missy. There you see the halftime score. The Tennessee Volunteers leading in the homecoming battle with the Oklahoma State Cowboys by a score of 17 to nothing. Tell you, this game could be a 7 to nothing game it, very easily. Kind of and, a strange first half. Oh, very strange. And the fact that it's uh, back to it's 17 nothing, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's very depressing. For, it has to be for Oklahoma State, but for Tennessee, they're going into the, all, into the locker room all fired up because they're 17 nothing up and they hit a big field goal at the end. But this game, other than the last two minutes, was a 7 to nothing ball game. This is the first ball game that Tennessee has played in Condridge when they face the team that's almost exclusively a running team. So uh, they had a good look at the run in, in the first half. The pride of the Southland marching band is now taking the field here in Knoxville and will entertain the homecoming crowd and lots of activity going on at, at halftime. The ball's leading by a score of 17 to nothing after a couple of uh, games here at Nayland, Mississippi State last week, and Oklahoma State this week. They will go on the road to Arkansas next week. A lot of big games coming. Let's go down on the field now and pick up some of the music from the Pride of the Southland Marching Band.
All right, as the Tennessee band performs here at halftime, uh, Missy has another very special guest down on the sideline, so let's go to Missy. That's exactly right, Bob. Uh, Jimmy Streeter, one of the great quarterbacks in UC history, 76 to 79, still in the top three total offense at UT. Jimmy, tell me real quickly, you've had a lot of ups and downs that you left, and I think you've got a, a message that you're trying to tell young people and people all out. If you've gone through a tough talent, tell us a little about that. My honor has been blessed. You know, I want to come back. It's been about 16 years ago, and uh, that just it brings chills to me. But the thing about it is, I am so happy. I'm so blessed. I want to thank you for WIBK, and I just want to say thank you. Tell us a little bit about you on to us now, but um, about your battle with diabetes and some past drug abuse that you're putting behind you now. That's exactly right. You know, me speaking with the uh, kids, children, I'd love to tell that about the uh, drugs because, you know, at first when I when I come there, you know, I wanted to tell the truth about uh, not do no drugs, but I did tell the truth. I, mean, I was so ashamed of myself, but then again, looking there, there was maybe what, Willie Gall, Pat Ryan, you know, uh, my uh, Anthony Miller, you know, and what, it's just say why me, but my mother and my father says, don't worry about, uh, don't, don't you worry about the life and the life about, he said, the thing about it is, is that just be thankful that you're alive. We're thankful you're here, Jimmy, and I want you to show everybody a little bit about this ring. Oh, yeah. You lost your ring when you lost your arm, your SEC ring was gone. Tell us about what happened today. That, that was very special to me, because when I was there, uh, at the time I got bit by a spider, but in reality they said it was because of drugs. He had, he said it was about 24 hours to live. I really wasn't thinking about my ring, but it happened that it was finally gone. My brother was there, my baby brother, his name is Eric, and he won the Great Cup, which they call the Super Bowl. And he said, where's your ring? And I said, well, here it is. And then I thought about that. I traced it back, but the thing about it is it was all gone. But you know what? I'm here, and I'm so happy. Like I said, I'm so blessed. Just thank you anyhow. You know? Well, an anonymous person went to Jostin. They heard that you wanted your SEC ring back, and when did you get it? Uh, I got it. They got it when they come to uh, just what, about 3 o'clock yesterday. That's great. That well, last question. We got Connors up there. I was trying to get him down Where here. Is Connors is a yes. big reason you're, you came to Tennessee. Yes, I'd love to see Connors. This is funny. I'd really, I would really love to see Connors. Any good stories on Connors you can tell? <laughs> is he, the thing about it is he believes in himself. He's a positive. And that's the key. You know, especially right there. I was, I was honored because to look at Connors, I wanted to be a great man. As a matter of fact, I wish I could see him. I was that. Well, we're going to arrange for you to see him after the game. you got to come back down here. I know Connors loves to see you. Thank you so You're a great much. man for coming down here and being truthful. Thank and good luck and have a great time this homecoming weekend. Yes, ma'am. Like great player, Jimmy Streeter, and he's making a great comeback. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, the alma mater. the uh, playing of the alma mater here at homecoming a uh, very moving uh, interview there Conridge with Jimmy Streeter and I know you want to respond to that well yes I, I'm looking forward to seeing him after the game and it's uh, I've, I've been keeping up with Jimmy uh, through his, his brother Eric up in Canada when he was there he was at the end of my career and uh, Steve Cyphers who's with ESPN uh, had called me and told me they were going to do a story with Jimmy and I, uh, I, I've been very up to date with his progress, and I'm just glad to see him finally. I ha haven't seen him in so long, and I, you know, I have to admit that's that's not the guy I saw the last time. But uh, he's from listening to him talk, he's the same person inside, and I just I'm looking forward to seeing him after the game, and I've got a lot of things I'd like to talk to him about. But it's it'll be very positive, and I'm glad to see that he's doing well, and 
and getting on and, and get, making something positive for the rest of his life. All right, uh, Linda. Kind of an interesting yet weird first half of play, Condridge. Oh, it was uh, first first series comes out just like everybody planned, and then the first half of play, Condridge. Oh, it was uh, first first series comes out just like everybody planned and then it didn't happen again until two minutes left in the half. All right, there you see the stats, Tennessee and Oklahoma State pretty even on rushing, passing yardage, Tennessee with the big edge, 129-135, total 194-104, and in first downs, 12 to 8 turnovers, Tennessee did not turn it over in the first half, Oklahoma State had one. Now let's go down on the field as we are getting close to the uh, second half action and check in again with Missy. Well, I have a tandem team down here. These guys played 51 championship team. Bob Davis was a center. Thanks for joining us, Bob. Dr. Andy Kozar, great fullback. And I heard that you were caught. You, they always said that you bulled your way into the end zone. Is that correct about That's Kozar? Correct. That's correct. That's yes. The only reason I could bull anywhere because I had one of the biggest guys in front of me bullying the people out of the way. Bob, Bob Day is a center back then. Yeah. Um, tell me, you guys are really close. I know that he gives you guys a lot of credit. Um, Haslam, a lot of guys. What did you tell me about cleaning up the room? He had a very clean room, I heard. Oh, yes. Well, Jim Haslam and Vince Cassetta were my roommates, and I told them if they blocked very well, I'd clean the room all the time, and it was very, very clean. It was. It I was. It was yeah. Let me ask you about that here. We've got some footage of you guys. I can't believe it still works, but the footage has actually worked. I saw it. But tell me about uh, General Nealon. I mean, he seems like he's influenced you guys to be so successful off the field as well. Great man. Great man. Really a great man. And I, I, I can't take, give him any credit for anything I've done because he beat on me all the time, really, <laughs> trying to get me to do something. So, uh, but he was a great man, great football coach. Bob's being very humble. Nealon was a great man. I told you this in our other interview the other day. Uh, but Bob was a great center. I wanted to tell everybody that. I think they knew it, but he was our, he's really our team historian, and he's also the team comedian. He's, right. he's, he's pretty funny, but I never saw anybody could remember what Neyland said, what he did, much more than he did. He's, he's a good interview. Take tell care, me, Tell me about homecoming. A lot of guys coming back, and, and you all have a very unusual group, that 51 team. Well, uh, it is. we're pretty close, and as Andy said, we keep up with each other, and know just about where everybody is and try to keep in phone contact with them and uh, probably maybe next year we'll come back again for the 45th yes 45th reunion we're gonna get together again year. we'll even try to dig up in the archives get some more of that great old footage of you bullying in the end zone <laughs> well you gotta dig awfully deep <laughs> we'll try to <laughs> right thank, thank you guys you. both thank enjoyed it all enjoy it. homecoming yes. okay bob all right jay graham on the first carry of the second half john summers returned the uh, kickoff and Graham bulls his way up there for <laughs> gotta catch it, it. Yeah, it is for a first down. Jay Graham, it's important that he get a hundred yards because I'll tell you why. Since 1990, Tennessee is 31, one and two when a back rushes for over a hundred yards. Wow. And he's got in the neighborhood of 70 right now. Here is a first down and 10 situation. They hand it off to Graham. He cuts back. Nothing doing this time. Oklahoma State waiting for him. Solid hits led by the nose tackle Norman Williams. This is one time where the hole was outside. So it's uh, just you have to make that split decision really fast. And like I said, sitting up here in this air conditioned box, I see that a lot easier. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that there was a hole outside. Vision is uh, something Graham will pick up, of course, as he goes along, seeing what Condridge was just talking about. Plenty of time. Pass too high, though, this time intended for Joey Kent. Manning really turned it loose downfield. So Tennessee will be looking at a third and 11 situation to start the second half of play here. They got through the first half with a 17 to nothing lead. I say got through because except for the last drive and the extremely nice field goal by Jeff Hall. It wasn't all that impressive when you look at it as a whole. But as Coach Fulmer said to Missy at halftime, Oklahoma State had a lot to do with that defensively. They have played inspired football. Manning may be checking off at the line, setting his players, looking at a long third down situation to Joey Kent. He's going to be short of the first down, though. And Tennessee will have to give up the football. 
Kent coming across the middle made the stop. Lewis Adams, the linebacker, made the stop for Oklahoma State, but it'll send Binion into the game to do the punting for Tennessee. Now that's a, a, a defensive NFL type of trick. When you're third and long, they show you blitz, show you blitz, and make you go into your blitz offense, which is usually a, a side adjustment, and the play is never designed to make 10 yards. So you end up fourth down and one and have to punt. Nice kick. Andre Richardson takes Ooh. it, and he is smashed. Ooh. George <laughs> Kidd. Punt was for 43 yards. The return, a painful two. Summers also downfield. Shade has now fallen over about two thirds of the football field. And officials timeout. Jimmy Harper says the officials have called this timeout. Oklahoma State operating in the sun spot down there. We're early in the second half of play. Remember next week's game in Arkansas will also be on pay per view. So check with your local cable company for that. Seventeen to nothing. The ball's on top. That could be a very tough trip for the Tennessee team. Arkansas is playing we quite well. We have a new quarterback. We do, don't we? Yes. Craig Strickland has come into the ball game now. There he is, number 18, uh, replacing Tony Jones. And he is a freshman. Played which, very, very little. Which makes defensive coordinators mild salivate. <laughs> Let's see what Leonard Little <laughs> thinks about this situation. They start thinking the ble B word, blitz. <laughs> 17 to nothing. He hands it off on his first play, and pretty good yardage is picked up by David Thompson, kind of weaving his way through there. Oklahoma State has turned out some great football players, especially running backs, and don't know that he's in the category of a couple of we mentioned earlier, but he's a good, good-looking football player. Well, he, that's... That's a Barry Sanders type move. A vision there was very good on that play. Just picking a hole. It's an option running play. Thompson's got uh, 78 yards now in this ball game. They try to slide outside. Flags go down and Tennessee meets him over there. Steve Johnson hits David Thompson, but a flag was dropped at the line of scrimmage. I think you might have a crack back blocking below the waist. And a Tennessee player, I believe, During is the down. run, oh. holding, holding, offensive line. A little holding. I believe that is Noel, isn't it? Yes. Tory Noel, who is down. Hope it's nothing more than a stinger. He was held out a year because of a neck a injury. Oh. <laughs> I see what happened to Tory. Tory is coming up to make the play and got hit helmet to helmet. It was almost a D cleater, but not quite. I would say he just has a terrific headache right now. He should get up and walk off pretty good. But uh, the guy that hit him, Tory didn't see him. It was one of those shots. There's uh, the starting quarterback, Tony Jones, who has been taken out of the ball game and replaced by Craig Strickland. A little bit of a surprise here in the uh, second half of play. The trainers are out working now on Torrey Noel. Tennessee and Arkansas next Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff Eastern, 2 o'clock Central, and it'll be live right here on Video Seat. So start making plans now to contact your local cable company early in the week to order what should be a very exciting Southeastern Conference battle. Also, we remind you of the best of the Big Orange Home Video Collection Series, the Volume 3, the Great Ball Running Backs. As you saw at halftime, some of the action there, a great one for you Vol fans to put in your library to keep forever. Available now for only $19.99 at participating J.C. Penney stores across Tennessee, or you may call that toll-free number on your screen to place your order for the Great Ball Running Backs tapes. All right, there. The good news is that Tory is walking off under his own power, and possibility, I would say, of a it, certainly a severe headache, but maybe a mild concussion. The way he was hit there, uh, Condridge. 
Well, there's uh, what Condridge was talking about. <laughs> Blitz Fresh time. Freshman, they like that. But, uh, you know, that has to be a part of your, your strategy when you get a young guy in there because he's just like every other freshman. They don't know what they don't know. And you've got to challenge them and make them make plays. George and Kidd you, and Leonard Little. When you make them make plays a little faster than they're used to in practice, then they have a tendency to make mistakes. There's George from Milan, Tennessee, one of the seniors on this team. That's the second sack of the day for the ball defense. Now they're looking at third down and 20. A very uncomfortable situation for a freshman quarterback. He fires and completes it, though, out in the flat. Turns it upfield, but not nearly enough for a first down. Terrence Richardson, the receiver, George Kidd, and Corey Gaines made the stop for the balls. Kidd and Gaines. Head coach there of Oklahoma, Coach Bob Simons, in his first year after seven years with Coach McCartney at Colorado. Of course, he's been to a lot of bowl games while at Colorado and was on a championship team out there as well. So he knows what it takes to win, and he will do it in time at Oklahoma State. But right now, just an incredibly young football team. Greg Ivey, one of the nation's best punters, is standing Little back. movement. And he's standing back on the five yard line and he may be standing even further back. Sean uh, Summers waiting to receive it. We have a false start. Illegal movement offensive line. He'll be in the end zone this time. This could be an interesting situation here. You might want to change. Uh, this is a situation where you might change a call if you had a block on. You put the return on. Yeah, because Summers. Uh, is a good return man there, Sean. And he's got a chance to get it uh, deep into Oklahoma State territory. Tennessee puts a little pressure on him. Summers lets it bounce, takes it on the bounce, and heads for the nowhere to go right now. Reverses his field, tries to find running room, still fighting. Excellent effort by Sean Summers to get into Oklahoma State territory before the kicker, Greg Ivey, finally makes the stop. He's the one. One block away from a touchdown. Uh, Punts for 46 yards. Condridge, the real thing you kind of hold your breath about there, though, is when they reverse the field is watching for the clip, right? Oh, watching for the clip. But if if there's smart Three enough players. Now, there's Raymond Austin doesn't clip, and he makes a great play right there because he could have very easily made, uh, clipped right there, and the, and the ball would have been 15 yards further back. You, get, you have to have smart people on your return teams. Avoid the clips, but they also get a chance when they reverse fields to make some spectacular blocks. <laughs> you, the people don't see you, and you just get a chance to really take a shot at them. There's a tired. Uh, that's too much <laughs> homecoming for there. Boy, that's a good-looking outfit, though. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful scene there. 49-yard line in Oklahoma State territory. The balls will take it over, leading 17 to nothing and trying to get some offense generated. It's been sporadic here in the ball game today, especially in the first half, and was with their first series here in the second half of play. The crowd today, a little over 95,000 for homecoming 95. And there went the scores <laughs> out into the crowd, gentlemen. <laughs> a little gust of win there. Here's a handoff. Big hole. Crashing through is Jay Graham. And he's into the vicinity of the 35-yard line, just shy of the 35 before Kevin Williams made the stop of Jay Graham. Nice run. Just a little isolation, a little trap box there. With Jeff Smith with a great block. Finishing off the run, Jay, Jay Graham getting positive yardage. Covering up the football. 17 carries, 85 yards now for Jay. Receivers set on the right side. They hand it off to Graham. Looked like he might have bobbled it for just a second, but still picked up some positive yards. But two flags are down on the play. A little holding penalty. Norman Williams made the stop. Nose tackle for Oklahoma State. We'll await uh, Jimmy Harper's call here of this one. I think they'll take this one. Hold it. We have offsetting penalties. Whoa. Holding offensive line. Push in the back, defensive team, penalties offset, replay the down. All right. You heard it from the man himself. 
10 minutes 18 seconds to go here in the third quarter of play some interesting games today Alabama beat Georgia 31 to nothing a lot of that was on turnovers a lot of their scoring LSU and South Carolina in a 20 all tie a surprise to me Condridge Florida beat Ole Miss but not nearly as much as people thought 28 to 10 right here's Jay Graham spinning and getting down to the 30 yard line before he stopped by right in Jay Grossfield Jarvis Rito and it left tackle right now for Jason Lehman. Jason Lehman. Jarvis Rito is expected to have a great future here. He's still in the learning stages, but he's at a spot where some great offensive linemen have gone before him. What's Bubba's term about that? Lights on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The wait, light's not on yet. Wait for the light to be turned on. Manning pulls it down, heads for the marker. He's got the first down. And he's also hit by R.W. McQuarters. And he's up. Peyton, the people don't realize Peyton's a tough kid now. I mean, I know everybody's all up and all about, oh, he can't get hurt, he can't get hurt. But the kid's going to play football, and he, he's a tough guy. And you got to remember, he's 6'5", and he's about 2'10", 2 2'15". 2 and yeah. he know he's a smart runner. He... he he went for the first down there, but any other time you see him getting down on the ground, and that's, you know, he knows he's got to play the entire season, and, and he's a smart player. Well, his daddy would tuck it and run. There wasn't one better, I'll tell you that. Here's Manning going to have, well, he throws it this time. Looked like he might run, but then fired it to Maurice Staley, who couldn't hang on. And Staley, he's okay, but couldn't hang on to that pass. Oklahoma State doing a fair fair job with pressure on the uh, quarterback when you consider Tennessee's offensive line is so big and so experienced. Of course they're playing quite a few people today. All right Manning looks at the situation with a 17 to nothing lead and deep into Oklahoma State territory. Needs 10 yards for a first hands it off. No, nope, that was a direct snap to Jay Graham. Jay Graham. Nice, sure was. nice little move there. We've had a couple of little trick plays <laughs> now on two uh, two weeks in a row here. Last week, of course, uh, Copeland lining up right. with quarterback and Manning out at That's a receiver. A direct play, direct snap to Jay Graham, and it was a trap. Big block. Jeff Smith thrown by Big Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Little trap play from a direct snap. That was. He's gone over 100 yards now. 102 yards for Jay Graham. 19 carries. Marcus Nash goes in motion to the top of the screen. Here's Manning handing off to Jay Graham again. This time he cuts inside and finds the running room pretty tough in there. Trent Fisher and Kevin Williams. Free safety, strong safety. Make the stop for Oklahoma State. 17 to nothing, Tennessee. Trying to drive down here and add some more points in this third quarter of play, which is about a half over. They need seven yards for a first. Of course, they're well, as <laughs> we know now, within Jeff Hall's field goal range. <laughs> right. 53 yarder to end the first half. Here's the fake to Graham and a pass wide open out here to Joey Marcus Nash rather and he's not quite to the first down marker Manning got level too he as to he take, threw the he took a shot right there and through the, the ball about it, he didn't he didn't see it coming and that's those are the ones that he's he's bending over a little bit that's a that's one that you don't expect because you didn't see it but uh, like I said he's a tough kid. Marcus making a nice catch on that one. Another Oklahoman on the uh, Tennessee team. First uh, reception for him in the game today. Although he's having a very good year. Manning out of the gun this time. Rolls to his right. Fires complete to Joey Kent. But I think he's going to be a little bit shy of the first down. So it's decision time. It'll be fourth down and... Half a yard. Half a yard, yeah, no more than that. Kevin Williams, the strong safety, did a nice job for Oklahoma State in preventing him from getting to the marker and the first down. I think you go for this one for two reasons. One reason, you're, you got to 
have faith in your offensive line and you are Tennessee. But the second reason is this is a tough angle for the kicker. You get a field goal right here. This is a tough angle. But you got to go. And a quarterback sneak will do it. They give it off up and over. Jay Graham got the first down and uh, maybe a yard more. First down and goal to go for the Tennessee Vols. This is just a play that's been practiced many times, perfected by James Stewart. Uh, Jay Graham has got a little more work to do on that because design, the design of this play is to get up and turn your body with the ball away from the defenders so you don't have a chance of fumbling and you turn your body sideways and project yourself up in the air. Jay will get it down. First down and goal to go at the three. Jay Graham smashes into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jay Graham. Well, that was a little better that time, Condridge. I know that Philip Fulmer is breathing a little bit easier over on the sideline. His it's offense did the did the job and just an isolation play a culmination of a long drive but if as you see there Jay Graham broke the initial tackle somebody came free in the defensive line there Norman Williams and uh, broke through and, and Jeff uh, excuse me uh, Jay Graham just ran through a tackle all right Jeff Hall tacks on the extra point and it's now a 24 to nothing Tennessee lead Tennessee has scored on three of the last four possessions. So now it's a little more interesting as far as Tennessee's offensive staff's concerned. At least they are, uh, I'm sure, a little more pleased with, with the situation. Let's go down on the field to Missy Kane. Hi, Missy. Well, I've got a couple other teammates back from 67 and 68. Very interesting story. Walter Chadwick, thanks for joining us. A lot of people remember you playing here. You went through a tough time 71. You were in a major car accident and nearly lost your life. Yes, ma'am, I'm lucky to be alive, Lord. Lord just blessed me and allowed me to live. And I got saved two years and three months after the accident. I got, got born again. I know you're a tailback. Yeah. And also, you have some interesting stats when you're a tailback. Yeah, it was pretty good. I led the SEC in scoring that year, scored 13 touchdowns. And and that was enough to lead the SEC in scoring. Dick Williams, you're on the defensive side, Captain 68. Tell me a little bit about Walter. He's kind of an unusual fellow, wasn't he? I just saw uh, Jay Graham go over the top for a first down. Walter was the best ever at diving <laughs> over for a touchdown, and he'd jump up and throw it into the stands of that left hand. But and he was two, today. two for two, I heard, too, throw. Two for two for two touchdowns. <laughs> two touchdowns. He was good, that left-handed throw. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming down here, Walter. We're going to talk to Dick a little bit later about the Hall of Fame Club, just when we come back. Up to you guys. All right, big return there by R. W. McQuarters. And he got against the flow that time and almost broke the thing for the entire distance. Corey Gaines was the man who saved it. There's the cutback, and he shows some speed. Again, this young man almost came to Tennessee. Hey, that's, that's some speed right there, but that's also speed chasing him. Yes, so it is. Uh, that was a good play, though, when you reverse your field like that. The quarters did a good job of seeing the field and getting back to the open spot. Play went 35 yards. Graham, uh, by the way, now has gone over the 100-yard mark. And big crushing tackle by Ron Green. I don't think Ron was touched on that one, Condridge. He just exploded through there. Well, that was a screen play, and that was definitely a freshman mistake. When you've got to throw it out to the screen, you've got to get rid of the ball. You cannot... <laughs> Your linemen are taught to stick, get to the screen. You've got to be an athlete and get the ball to the receiver. Well, and uh, that's a sack, but that, that sack is on the quarterback, not the offensive lineman. There's Big Ron. Great athletic ability. This has been the best starting position of the day for Oklahoma State. That freshman quarterback's in trouble again. He's trying to battle his way out of there. He's not going to make it. Leonard Little and chased him down along with Shane Burton.
We're still not totally sure why Jones was taken out of the ball game, Condridge, because he doesn't seem to be injured in any way. He just uh, coach, I guess, felt like it was time for a different pace or a change of pace, and and made the decision. Well, I especially if he decided he needed to throw the ball to win this game, which I think he, they do have to do. They they have to put the ball in there, and I. I guess he's thinking that, uh, uh, that David Thompson, well, no, Craig Strickland is a better passer than Tony Jones. Pretty good pass right there. Not nearly enough for the first down because of previous lost yardage, but it was to the tight end, Roger Pfeiffer. And it's going to be a fourth down situation. They tossed it over the middle, I guess. I'm assuming that was a secondary receiver that time because they still came up about eight yards shy of a first down. So Greg Ivey will go into punt formation and Sean Summers will drop back to receive. We're told that Jason Lehman has a hand injury but probably will return if needed. Ivey gets his kick away. Fair catch signal for by Sean Summers who catches the ball very very well. I know he returns them uh, nicely Condridge but Coaches, I think, look first and foremost in this day and time for a man who can actually catch the football and safely tuck it away. You can save numerous amount of amounts of yardage by catching the ball instead of letting it bounce. I Hi there. Hello. <laughs> How about those UT earrings, huh? Yeah, that'll work. Get good for 37 yards. All right, Manning and company leading 24 to nothing. Three minutes and a few seconds left here in the third quarter. Hands off. Mark Levine in at tailback right now. Crosses the line of scrimmage. And Tabor LeBlanc makes the stop. I know Mark Levine wish he had this back again. Because it was just. If he picked his feet up there's a big hole. He tr actually tripped over his own people. There are some of the scores from today. Florida not an easy win. They were favored by 28. And they won 28 to 10. Alabama over Georgia LSU had to come back and tie South Carolina. Here's Mark Levine cutting back pretty nicely this time and he crosses the 30 yard line. His running style is entirely different from Jay Graham's as you can see he runs a little bit more like Charlie Garner. Of course Garner was a truly outstanding running back. And Garner had that great ability to cut after he got through the line of scrimmage and they're hoping Levine develops some of that. Looking at a third down and two. So it's a pretty big down here for Peyton Manning. He fires. He's got his first down. Benji it's Shuler. Benji Shuler. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee. Manning, as you can see, is in total control as a good quarterback has to be. It's just a little flat pattern. They, uh, the defense for Oklahoma State was designed to the field, and the Tennessee offense took advantage of the short side package, just hit a little flat route. And the thing about hitting the flat route, which I said before, is getting it to the receiver in time enough to catch it and run up field, and that's what happened this time. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee. Manning tries to cross them up and does nicely. Oh, Dustin Moore. Well, this is a nice experiment here. Dustin Moore has came in to Tennessee. It's, of course, had a great career as a running back in high school, and they thought about putting him at tight end, then moved him to defense. And now, because of the injury to Horn, they're taking a look at him again on the offensive side. Well, they, the, fin the end of that run looked like a big tight end. <laughs> Tell you what, he is a <laughs> unbelievable a speed for a big guy. Here's the handoff to Levine. It's a little bit of yardage. I still think Dustin Moore probably, though, Conridge will wind up on the defensive side of the uh, ball. Uh, you can picture him with that speed being a great rush end. The fans are waking up. There's always that battle between the <laughs> offensive and defensive coaches and that's true. Peyton Manning's work so far today totaling 174 yards in the pocket got time got his man. It's complete to Marcus Nash. 
You know, when those battles happen, those battles occur between offensive and defensive coaches, with the background of our head coach, I think the offensive coaches will win. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. He said, I asked him about that one time. He said he thinks a whole lot differently now than he's, he's head coach. Tennessee moves the sticks. It's first down and 10 to go. Leading 24 to nothing. And the offense looking pretty good right now. Clicking on all cylinders. Manning drops. He fires. Got his man. Craig Kyler comes up with the catch. Right in the midst of the wave. The dreaded wave <laughs> is sweeping through Neyland Stadium. <laughs> Number 80 there is Craig Kyler, who's probably the fastest of all the Tennessee receivers, and they all have great speed. You see something here? The... Uh no huddle offense that Tennessee is running. That's a part of their repertoire, too. They they do that at certain times. It doesn't necessarily have to be a two-minute drill. This is... There's a nice cutback by Mark Levine. That's what they've been looking for, and Trent Fisher made the stop of Levine, but good vision on that one, Congress. Yes, uh, definitely a good, a good cutback, and as you see right here, it's just a, a, it's a lead play, but not really a lead play, but just an isolation play where the running back has an option from tackle to tackle to find a hole. And that time, Mark Levine found a hole back on the back side of the center, which there means he, he cut all the way back. From Dallas, Texas, hometown. Oh, no. Greg Kyler. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kangaroo court will be out on that one. <laughs> What do you say in the film room Monday, huh? Well, they run that back a few times and nobody says anything, but, uh, you know, he might he might get a, a few, oh, that one, just let it get a little bit too far into his body and it hit off his shoulder pads. But I don't think you get any more wide open than that. But we're wondering, come back. If, we're wondering if Manning should be given an incompletion <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Manning looking at second down and eight probably needs to go right back to Kyler. Tennessee receiver fell down on this play. Andy McCullough. Balls up 24 to nothing. Trying not to stall here in the orange zone. As we said, they lead the Southeastern Conference in field goals attempted. And that's not necessarily a good stat. No, that's not. There's Kyler, who would like, I'm sure, to atone for the drop. Tennessee, three of eight in third down conversions. They got five wideouts this time, and in the shotgun is Peyton Manning. It's a matter of finding somebody. He did! Touchdown, Joey Kent. Well, I'll tell you, you had two to choose from that time. Joey Kent was wide open, and so was Benji Shuler. But Joey makes an excellent move here on the little corner out. And Peyton and Joey have worked on this thing so much, it's, it's second nature to them to do this. And when, when you're playing this Tennessee five wide formation and you're manning it up, you have got to get to the quarterback. Because if you don't, you're, just, you're fighting a losing battle. You're going to lose it most of the time. Kent's got eight receptions for 170 yards. Jeff Hall. Jason Price holds, and Jeff Hall kicks good. And the balls go up 31 to nothing now over the Cowboys of Oklahoma State here in Knoxville. We've got 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Well, that's uh, beginning to be a little more impressive offensively now for, for Tennessee. They're doing a number of things right, and I think the good news is, Conridge, they're using a number of people to do it, playing an awful lot of folks in that drive. Yes, they are. Here's just a little drop back, and you'll see the corner out here by Joey Kent, one-on-one. -on -one. You're asking, uh, without pressure on the quarterback, you're asking the defensive back to do something that's just very tough to do. And, of course, he's from Huntsville, I Alabama. I thought you'd get that in. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have to say that he's from Huntsville. <laughs> All right. Tennessee with 15 seconds to go. Here in the third quarter, up 31 to nothing. Let's go to Missy. Hi, Missy. Hey, guys. I don't think everyone knows Stanley Morgan. He was the man here at Tennessee. I know Congress remembers Stanley. 15 years in the pros, four-time 
on the all-pro list and also number one in overall yardage here, all-purpose yardage here, Stanley. I think you did it all for Tennessee back then. What all did you do? Well, I, I had a lot of help. I had a lot of help, and Condridge was a big help with that. And uh, how much did you? How many did you Condridge pay you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I talked to him afterwards. <laughs> but uh, I had a great time. I got a chance to play with some good people, and uh, they made things uh, happen for me. 16 years in the pros. A lot of people just can't hold up that well. You look great too. Well, I was very fortunate to avoid injuries, and that's the key. And Having a long career is not being able to uh, get hurt and just staying away from the injuries, and I've been able to do that. Well, I know you got some friends here. Mike Gale played with you coming back from Memphis. What's, what's homecoming like for you guys? Oh, it's been great. We've been able to see some guys we haven't seen for a number of years and uh, reminisce about some of the old times and uh, tell some more lies, I guess. So Connors has included that, I'm sure, at the tea club afterwards. Oh, he knows it. He knows it. We're not, we're not going to tell him, uh, uh, give the fans anything about him yet, but... Country knows all about it. Okay, we'll see what he says after this. Thank you guys for coming down on we the field. It. Stanley Morgan, one of the greats, of course, with Tennessee football. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Tony Jones is back in. He tossed out to David Thompson. Jesse Sanders right on top of it. Uh, Stanley Morgan, uh, hard to say just how good he, he really was. Wow. Uh, Conridge, he could well, do it all. He was, for me, he was... My guy, he was the best that I've been around. And uh, there wasn't anybody that was close to do the things that Stanley could do. And as far as what they were alluding to down there, can I plead, plead the fifth up here? Yes, okay. I think you better. Thank you. <laughs> Second down and 10 to go. They try to come outside the right end. Leonard Little will have no part of that. David Thompson is dropped. The thing about Stanley Morgan that a lot of people don't understand, and the pros knew about it, he was one of these guys that had a speed and then had a second speed when the ball was in the air. And he was, they talk about guys that have recovery time. He did it on an offensive standpoint, going to get footballs. And it was just amazing the speed that he had once the ball was in the air. Well, it's the end of three quarters of play here at Neyland Stadium, homecoming, and the volunteers are entertaining the the alumni and all the fans with a 31 to nothing lead going to the fourth quarter of play. Tennessee trying to get a lot of players into the ball game today. Next week it'll be Tennessee and Arkansas. They play that game in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And it'll start at 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern, and you can pick it up again on pay-per-view video seat. You need to contact your local cable company early in the week to place your order for what should be a terrific Southeastern Conference game. Arkansas, it's a good uh, good thing that Tennessee is playing a running team this week, Condridge, because Arkansas, of course, likes to run the football. Danny Ford likes to control the game. He likes to more or less use his offense as his defense. He uses his, you're right, exactly. He, he controls the clock, and when his defense is on field, he wants them on there fresh, getting on and off, and he burns up the clock with his offense by grinding it out. Tony Jones out for Alonzo Mays. Incomplete. Let's go back to Missy. Well, I kept Dick Williams down here. Of course, Dick was captain of the 68 team. Good team back then, Dick. But also, you're still very active. Tell people what you're doing now. Well, Missy, I'm president of the East Tennessee chapter of the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame. We support amateur athletics for one thing, but we try to get our former players in the College Football Hall of Fame. The last one we got in was Steve DeLong. I think you interviewed John Michaels a few minutes ago. John Michaels has come back to this part of the country, and we're trying to get him in the Hall of Fame. We also have Bill Johnson on the ballot and Frank Emanuel. We need people to join the East Tennessee chapter, and it helps us in the national level by having members vote for players to be in the Hall of Fame. We have 350 and we need about 450. So we need people to call and ask about how to join the Hall of Fame. They can call the athletic department. Uh, there, people probably don't even realize how many great players Tennessee has had. Oh, absolutely. And the first requirement is to be an All-American. And Missy, we've had a lot. We have 17 in the Hall of Fame now. And there's about eight or ten others that we need to have in at this point in time. Right, thank you, Dick, for joining us, and I hope we we'll get a lot of response from coming down here on the field. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right, Bob. Okay, thank you, Missy. After the Sean Summers punt return, new we're going to have a new quarterback. Jermaine Copeland has entered the game for Tennessee. A freshman, true freshman. 
a poised true freshman. Yes, he is. I've got the opportunity, the pleasurable opportunity to meet that young man. And I actually met him uh, when he was a high school senior at the basketball tournament. And uh, Coach O'Neill was down there at the time, and he wouldn't mind having him play basketball. But he told me at that point, he says, I'll never see him. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be on the football field. But, well, uh, he was a most valuable player in the state tournament, as a matter of fact, in basketball, as his team won the title. Manning, by the way, leaves the game with 199 yards, 16 out of 25 for Peyton Manning. And Jermaine Copeland takes over at quarterback. Ronnie Pillow is also in there now, and Copeland probably took a little too much time. No, here. a little motion. Right guard. Was it? Right guard moved. That illegal procedure. Illegal procedure <laughs> offensive line. <laughs> well, we all have those problems, Jimmy. Sometimes the words just won't fall won't out. Won't come out, yeah. <laughs> there, there he is, go. raising up just a bit. Big Jeff. It's all right, Jeff. We talk about you when you make good plays, too. Jeff, if you were a freshman, they would overlook that, but they will not <laughs> overlook it <laughs> with your experience. Baker is in also now a new man at, at, at fullback. Here's the handoff to Pillow, and he fights for yardage. Nice effort by Ronnie Pillow. Out of Columbia, Tennessee. Alama Bailey from linebacker made the stop for the Cowboys. If you notice, the Cowboys are making the same assumption on defense that the Tennessee defense did. Uh, freshman at quarterback, let's blitz him. And uh, that was a blitz that time. And luckily, there was a run and play opposite of it, and uh, it, it went for positive yards. Tennessee looking at second and 11. Remember, they had a five-yard penalty in there. Here comes Copeland out on the keeper. Nice, nice bit of running by Jermaine Copeland. That's what he brings to the Tennessee team. And I think that's great because even if if you're in a close ball game, you could put him in Condridge and just kind of mystify the defense because they don't know what's coming. Well, it makes them play honest. And right there, the Oklahoma State defensive ends were not playing honest and they got burned. Went for 17 yards and a big first down. And right now the ball right at midfield. Jermaine Copeland operating at quarterback turns it. He's going to keep it again and steps over a man makes a nice move. Alama Bailey made the stop for the Cowboys. Copeland will be the type athlete that Tennessee fans will love because he just you can just look at him and tell it's excitement. Here's oh, some scores. Look at that. Take a look at that one. Ohio <laughs> State after three with a one point lead. Virginia Tech over Pittsburgh and Clemson. That ex Tennessee ball head coach there. What? Tommy West. Good job, Bone. This time, uh, Gray Baker takes it into the middle of the line and not a whole lot of running room there. Baker running now at uh, fullback. Barker, I should say. Ray Barker. We've got 12 minutes and 40 seconds of football remaining here in homecoming 95. Tennessee getting some fresh faces on the field right now, but these are guys who can contribute this year and certainly will be big contributors in uh, the years ahead. Fighting for yardage is Ronnie Pillow. And Tabor LeBlanc makes the stop after he moves the chains. There's a good shot of Ronnie. He's played some slot back position here. Pretty good pass receiver, Condridge. He can uh, can run and catch it. Yes, this is just a, a trap. And hey, good good running there. You'd like to get a little better lean so you don't take such a clear shot. But uh, positive yards is positive yards. It's first down and 10 to go. Copeland is going to keep it and he's going to eat it. And he had a he had an open player too. It's just a blitz from the short side of the field, a corner blitz, and that's something you don't allow for. The quarterback has got to recognize that. And with his back turned like this, he couldn't see him. He, it being a great athlete kept him from taking a knockout punch there. <laughs> R. W. McWhorter is coming on the 
freshman cornerback coming on the cornerback blitz and uh, drops Jermaine Copeland to make it second and long about 20 yards to go for a first Tennessee leading 31 to nothing over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. This team's already played Nebraska. They've still got to play Oklahoma and Colorado. Meeting 12th ranked Tennessee here today. Now Copeland's getting out of the grasp of one player going to add live a bit and get some of the yardage back. Lorenzo Green left end defensively for Oklahoma State knocked him down. Sometimes that athletic ability can get you out of a jam. This was just uh, obviously a missed block because he didn't even have a chance to set up. But uh, when you can dodge that first one, you can buy yourself a little time. Mr. Condridge Holloway was quite good at that. Well, you you bought a lot of <laughs> A lot of offensive linemen dinner, I know, but there were a lot of times when they owed you because after a miss, you <laughs> you made them look good. Let's just say we had a chance to avoid a few people. <laughs> Let All it right. go. Copeland got time, throws long. long, and almost intercepted. Now in, that intended for Peerless, Peerless Price, who actually turned into the defender. I was going to just say that. He made a great play as be, of being a defender. And in a quarterback's mind, when he knows that he can throw a ball like that and you will not let it get intercepted, you'll get a lot more of those thrown to you because there's the good things can happen out of that, too. If you're a better athlete, you can go up and get that football. Binion has punted four times today for a 39.5 average. His longest was 44 yards. And he just simply tries to get an awful lot of height on this one. And he does, and it turns out to be a nice uh, nice position punt for him. Ball will be spotted at the 15-yard line where the Oklahoma State offense will take over. Crowd still hanging in here, watching a lot of uh, young balls play right now, leading 31 to nothing. We have a violation of the two-yard buffer zone, five-yard penalty. Tennessee crowding him a little too, too much that time. That's a rule the college football barred from the CFL. I think it's very good. Of course, up there it's five yards. But Tennessee five penalties now for 35 yards. Tony Jones is operating at quarterback, and just very little happening on that one. <coughs> We have well, defense violation neutral zone five yard penalty. Bob, I don't know. I'm I'm of the jumped in there a little too. Yeah, quick. but I'm of the opinion if you get a free play like that, don't go down on one knee. I I block everybody and go back and throw throw a bomb. Try to get a positive play. I mean, I'm, you're already going to get five yards. But uh, philosophies differ. Last uh, three possessions, it's been three and out for Oklahoma State. Delayed handoff to the tailback. Tennessee did a nice job of covering him on that one. Mercedes Hamilton. First time we've called his name today. Made the stop of David Thompson. Mercedes Hamilton has a very good future here at Tennessee. Redshirt freshman. Extremely strong young man. Thompson has rushed 20 times now for the Cowboys for 84 yards. So he's had a, a long day. Jones got one receiver set on each side. Lone running back gives it to him. Not much running room there. David Thompson is corralled and knocked down by Antron Peoples. Antron Peoples is a good story. Came out of Murfreesboro, Riverdale. Linebacker on the state championship team. Coach they, Gary Rankin? Yes. Yeah. A teammate of yours, wasn't he, Condry? That's right. Peoples has been thought about at several positions, but I think they've settled on linebacker for him now. They had thought about using him some at tight end, even running back, I think, at one time. But he has, I think, shown that linebacker is his position. Has a very promising career ahead. Here's a handoff to Thompson, who was kind of stumbling when he went into the line and couldn't do a whole lot with it, but he may have done enough. Mercedes Hamilton and Peebles made the stop again. And it is enough for a first down. 
So Oklahoma State does something they haven't done in the last three possessions and that's uh, pick up a first down here and try to keep the offensive team on the field. Eight minutes and 27 seconds they've got to do something positive. Tennessee is up 31 to nothing. David Thompson at tailback. That's their first first down in this half. That was a great cut. That was just an isolation play. And you have an option of running from tackle to tackle. And David Thompson saw the hole all the way back on the backside of the center. That's a uh, good vision. Good Jeff, vision. Jeff Coleman stepped in to make the uh, stop. There it is. Just a cut back play and good vision. And as I said before, positive play. So they're now looking at a couple of yards to go for a first down on second down a chance to pick up their second first down of this half and spinning and driving for it and picking it up and fumbling the football there's a scramble for it looks like Oklahoma State might have had it for us yes they do Shane Begno was in on uh, the bottom of that but Oklahoma State comes up Shane, Shane made actually the stop on him Take a look at it right here on replay. Whoa, we got an injury there. Looked like a shoulder. He went in. Watch the end of this play. Watch the Oklahoma State player right here. His shoulder. Mm. Ouch. That's Roger Pfeiffer, the tight end. Yep. They're attending to him on the sideline. You got to be a daredevil to go in there after those fumbles because everybody's going. It's first down and 10 to go for Oklahoma State. And off hit in the backfield as Thompson gets away from one man, got away from another, still fighting, and finally is dropped over there. Sean Summers comes up from the secondary, Al Wilson. Oh, there he is on the sideline, the tight end. That looks like a dislocation. Yes, it does. Looks very painful, too. This is just a good overall effort right here. Uh, you reverse your field. Tennessee is in pursuit. But, uh, you know, Andre Wright Richardson made a good play. Made the best of a bad situation. All right, Oklahoma State now, second down, about 11 yards to go for a first. Andre Richardson has replaced David Thompson at tailback. Tries to find some running room. Bounces off one, but not the second. Anthony Hampton made the stop. Hampton has tremendous speed. He's a track guy. Hurdle champion. That just kind of comes hand in hand at Tennessee, doesn't it? it Football, seems, track, you do, you know, that's... So many of them have... Uh, here's good vision right here. Andre Richardson. Wow. So Hampton's closing speed there. Richardson remains at tailback. Tony Jones at quarterback. Looking now at third down and about eight. So he's going to try to put it in the air. He does out in the flat. It's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Andre Richardson on the receiving end of the screen pass. And the tackle was made by Jonathan Brown. Updating Ohio State now a little more comfortable on Notre Dame. Up by uh, 15 with... Some time left in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin leading Penn State early, three to nothing. Clemson with that big win over North Carolina State, 43 to 22 today. Some of the scores of importance: Oklahoma and Colorado in a big game that will be played tonight. So it's a fourth down two. and no more than two, if that much. Tennessee's going to stuff it. David Thompson is stuffed by Al Wilson, a true freshman. One of the key actually had some help, but Ralph Nelson, Jeff Coleman also in on that one defensively. Look at number 27 in your picture there. He's the one who tripped him, and then teammates polished him off. That looked like a blocking assignment mix up there. Looks like Tennessee's got another quarterback in. Bates has come in the ball game. Jeremy Bates now operating a quarterback for Tennessee. Their third of the day. Bates trying to get outside and they can't do it. Sean yeah. Bryson 
is also in there. Got a little penalty, late hit, out of bounds. Number 24 there is Sean Bryson, who took the pitch from Bates and took the late hit as well. Bates pitches out as he's going down. After the play is over. Here it comes. We have a personal foul, dead ball, defense, first down. In all fairness to the Oklahoma State player, though, he looked like he was kind of trying to pull up a little bit, uh, Condridge, but it was just uh, too far out of bounds to, oh, yeah. to let it go. Eight penalties, 105 yards now. Is that right? No, 75 yards. I'm sorry. Eight penalties, 75 yards against the uh, Oklahoma State team. Oklahoma State's got a player down on the field. Sean Bryson is uh, a youngster from North Carolina. And there have been so many of them out of North Carolina oh, who yeah. added to Tennessee's program down through the years. Haskell Standback, Kannapolis. Yeah, remember him. Robert Pullian, Salisbury. Adams, the player there who's shaken up a bit, right. but it's not serious. It gingerly going to walk off the field. Conrad Graham, another North Carolina. John Yarborough. We can keep going on and on, can we, Bob? The Schuler brothers? <laughs> well, how can we forget them? <laughs> I thought you wanted us ancient guys. <laughs> you know, I found out something that I didn't know. That of course, if, Leonard Little, too. That's true. That if you have an alumni group big enough, you can pick up pay-per-view just about anywhere you want. That's true. You, I, I, you got friends watching in various places oh, today? Oh, all over the place. My mother's in Seattle. I've got Tony Anderton and Al Smith in Huntsville. Janet Signiego in Dallas and a, and a group at the Wings It in Jacksonville uh, via Ray Nettle says they're watching this, I know. So uh, Mr. Nettle said, make sure to say hello to them. So they're all over the country, pay-per-view. Lewis Adams, the linebacker, is coming off the field under his own power, but it would appear he will not be back in this ball game. Four minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the contest. First down and 10 to go. And Bates is operating now the penalty of course made it the first down Bates operating at quarterback and nothing doing there hand off to Bryson Jamal Williams left defensive end made the stop and another cowboy is down shaken up on the play looks like the strong safety Kevin Williams who is down you know you hate to see that with the way the way things were happening, see kids get hurt now. It's just uh, you just uh, hope that it's not too serious. And of course, the injuries is part of the game, but uh, you just hate to see this happen in, in a, this part. This way, the way this game is going right now, you hate to see people get hurt. Of course, Kevin Williams is still in there. He's a starter, and even though the game is out of hand as far as Oklahoma State's concerned, there's not much the coaching staff can do because they're so incredibly young. I don't know who you go to. They you got to play young players. Play those freshmen and, and sophomores and redshirt freshmen and that's what they're doing and trying to get them playing time. Tennessee up 31 to nothing. Let's go down on the field during this timeout and talk to Missy. Well, I've got athletic director Doug Dickey here and his grandson. What's his name? This is Dylan. Okay, Dylan. I know you got. Dan Ralston. And you've got a lot of grandkids I know around. But let's talk real quick about homecoming. Um, special time here at Tennessee, and I've interviewed quite a few of your players. How is it for you coming back and seeing a bunch of your old pro players and great players that have played here at Tennessee? Well, of course, we see them every weekend. A lot of them, they come back. Uh, homecoming is special. I, I thought this one uh, this week uh, probably had more enthusiasm than I've seen a lot of. Whoever put this one on did a very good job of it. Got good cooperation from the weather. And I, but I think everybody had a good time. There were a lot of activities, and I thought the crowd at the parade was the biggest I've seen us have. And, this was a good crowd today. The band uh, always does its thing well here, and I think everybody has had a good time. And shut out so far, you got to be happy with the game. Well, I always, sure. I think the coach got the scoreboard fixed right. Okay. <laughs> One last question. I want to say um, we want to wish Joanne a lot of good luck. Of course, she's in that terrible accident, and she's doing fairly well. She's doing a good, steady job of recovery, and I appreciate that, Mrs. Right. Thank you, and thanks, Dylan, and your buddy, for coming down. Thanks, okay. you. All right, back to you, Bob. All right, thank you, Missy. We may have a replay coming up on the injury here. Coming off the field is the uh, safety Kevin Williams. We'll take a look at it right here. This is a lead block, and this is hey, mano a mano. Wow. 
Yep, that was just a uh, one-on-one -on -one block, helmet to helmet. Johnny Jones breaks it up. I don't know how tall Jeremy is, uh, Condridge, but I don't believe he's as tall as they list him here. Uh, uh, 5'10", 5'11", it's no. probably 5'8"-ish, would you say? Uh, 8-ish would be <laughs> good. <laughs> but I tell you what, there's, Tough competitor, there's no bigger heart out there. He, he, he knows the offense. It's amazing what he's learned in such a short time. And he's back to throw. They're going to turn him loose on a long one. Touchdown. Good feed. Oh. Oh. Andy McCullough. <laughs> Stretching and stretching. A heck of a shot, though. Would you say that was the top end of length for Jeremy? You think he threw that one as far as he could? I believe he reached <laughs> back and got everything on that one. Boy, a little bit more, and he had six. He had six. Good option, good place to throw it. Larry Binion with 3.58 to go will stand back at about his 42-yard line and punt it away. Trent Fisher has dropped Back to receive for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State coming on this one, but Binion does a nice job of sailing it down there. Kicks right back perfectly for the balls, and they down it inside the 10-yard line. So with 347 remaining in the game, some young Tennessee defenders now will try to keep Oklahoma State pinned back in their own territory. Some of the homecoming crowd has filed out of here. Others are staying to take a good look at the future. And speaking of the future, next week, Tennessee takes on Arkansas in Fayetteville. We'd <laughs> like to invite you to join Video Seat for another pay-per-view contest. Contact your local cable company early in the week to place your order for that game. Tennessee and the Hogs. Trying to come outside is David Thompson, and Tennessee closes it down rather nicely. Bill Duff, defensive tackle. Missy, what's happening down there? Well, we've been talking football all day. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. I'm with Lawrence Johnson, pole vaulter senior, won the NCAA title indoor a couple years ago. Outdoor again, only collegiate vaulter right now to go over 19 feet. Thanks for coming down here. What's your future? What are you pointing for this year, Lawrence? Uh, this year coming up, of course, is the Olympic year. So I'm putting in a hard fall, looking forward to getting everything straight. And I'd like to set the American record in Tennessee orange and white, you know, before I get ready to go to the Olympics and go for a gold medal. Of course, you got a great coach, Jim B. Miller. Oh, of course. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Jim B. Miller is great. Uh, he dedicates whatever time he can, you know, to helping us pole vaulters out which is, uh, he's not even on the coaching staff, so we really appreciate it. Well, thanks, Lawrence. I had to put that plug in. Jim is my husband, so I thought I'd get that in there. <laughs> thanks, guys. Good okay. job there, Missy. Why not, Missy? There you Good go. for you. Anthony Hampton made the stop on that last play. Nice defensive move by Tennessee. And Mr. Hampton, clock running at 2.36 to go. Tennessee up 31 to nothing, and Tony Jones being pressured, fires, and it's off the hands of the receiver, and Pretty close to being intercepted. Travis Hartfield, who actually is listed as a quarterback but plays some wide receiver. He's the number three quarterback on the depth chart. So Oklahoma State unable to move the football out of the shadow of their own goal post there. They will have to kick it away to Tennessee. Greg Ivey, who's done a beautiful job punting today, and he's had an opportunity to punt many times today. There you see his average, 45. Take that any day. Little pressure, his kick's a, a returnable one this time. It's a low one. Summers still fighting. John Summers does not like to give up and gets into Oklahoma State territory where the balls will take over. 47 yards on the kick and 13 on the return for Sean Summers. Two minutes and 12 seconds of football left. Well, Bob. The crowd will not be as friendly next week uh, in Fayetteville. No, they Conridge. won't. They will not. And that's a tough place to play with a pretty good football team. There's Sean just keeps battling. All right, back to the live action. 
Bates at quarterback Levine's at tailback now and picking up some good positive yardage for the Cowboys finally fall on him led by Courtney Garnett from free safety clock goes under two minutes Clean it out here pretty quick, yeah. didn't it, Bob? Sure did. They must be headed to Capricel. It's too early to go to Hooray, isn't it? I would say I imagine so. they're headed out down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're telling us here it's never too early. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bates slowly walks him up there with a minute 34 and the clock running. Mark Levine is his tailback and probably will get the call and does. Cuts back nicely and picks up a first down for Tennessee. That will stop the clock while they reset the chains. Well, the defensive effort for Tennessee today, I guess, uh, Condridge, we have to give an A+. Plus. Anytime you get a shutout, yes, you, uh, definitely. you have no matter, to call it an A. No matter who you play. And uh, even though that was on a missed field goal, that was questionable. But still, other than that, there was... No danger of being scored upon at all in the, during this contest. Bates gives it off to his fullback, Barker, and he gets a couple of yards or so before they knock him down. There you see the clock still running. Jamal Williams at the bottom of the stack defensively for the Cowboys from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Time for maybe one more play, possibly two at the most, but more than likely this will do it. As Tennessee walks up to the line of scrimmage, certainly no need for Oklahoma State to stop the play. Bates gives it off to Levine, who dances into the line of scrimmage and gets hit by Alama Bailey from linebacker. And that should do it. I think that's... Uh that's a classy way to end this one. And I know there's a lot of people that are probably him and hard about that, but uh, that's that's sportsmanship, and that's what the way it should be. Yeah, you could go for a couple of more scores there. Tennessee probably could have uh, put some more points on the board. They're number 12 in the nation. Uh, we'll see how the pollsters take a look at that. They won by 31 to nothing. I think the margin of victory. Tennessee was favored by about 33, 34 points. But when you get a shutout, that should impress pollsters. That's right. And another, think, and another thing too, being on the other end of one of these gives you, make you look at it a different perspective. So, uh, I think that was a, a great way to end it, and uh, see the players out at the middle field and doing their prayer after the game. Tennessee today used Manning, of course, at quarterback, Jeremy Bates and uh, Jermaine Copeland. Uh, they used Levine, Graham. Uh, Barker, Lane, all running backs today. They got a lot of people in defensively and offensively. Wide receiver, they got Joey Kent, Marcus Nash, Benji Shue, and Andy McCullough all in on one side. Maurice Staley, Greg, Greg Kyler, and Peerless Price. So they all got a shot today. And some guys got to play, too, on the offensive line and defensive line that uh, haven't had that much playing time of late. Total yardage, Tennessee wound up with 390 yards total today. Passing 199, rushing 191. So that's that's, uh, that's about as even <laughs> and nice as round figure as you're going to find. Uh, that's right. Cutcliffe will have to be happy with that, Coach Cutcliffe, I'm sure. Well, uh, you know, people weren't too happy at the beginning, but uh, I think they're happy with it. I think uh, there's. I think Missy is. Yeah, uh, she's got Coach Fulmer there. Got the coach down there. We'll be going down to her in just a second to get uh, comments. There's Peyton Manning who shaking hands with the Cowboys. You get an idea of Peyton's height right there. Yeah. Oh, I, I've stood next to him in the, doing interviews, and I'm about at his shoulder. <laughs> All right, let's go down on the field, and uh, Missy has got a guest. Jeff, you okay? Jeff, okay? He's okay. <laughs> Coach Fulmer, he mixes it up a lot on offense, and it worked well second half. Yeah, I'm just glad this one's over, to be honest with you. I don't know. We've played the we got a goose egg on defense. That's great Anytime you can do that. I'm proud of them. I hope all the old alums coming back had a great time and have a good time tonight. We didn't get too many people hurt, so it's a good win.
I planned to meet any old buddies back from the plane days. Oh, I've seen some all day today. Right now, I'm anxious to just get home and relax okay. a little bit. And we'll let, we'll get let you get out here. Tomorrow. Great game today. Thank you. Thank and you. also, a great game. I know Leonard Little had a great game. I think he's standing behind Coach. Leonard, Leonard's consists just improving all the time, and we're really proud of him. Well, one thing we want to do, Coach, thank you, Leonard. Great game when you get a shutout. What's your opinion of that? Um, it's our first shot of the year. It feels pretty good. You know, just come out and not let the team score any points on it. So we work for the out this week. Just get a shutout this weekend. All right, we got to toss it back up. We want to say Jeff Hall, great job on that 53-yarder for a uh, redshirt freshman. You play like a senior. Back up to you guys. Okay, thank you very much, Missy. Uh, Manning today, 16 uh, out of 25, 199 yards. Jay Graham, uh, 22 carries for 108 yards. The big uh, thing for Tennessee defensively, Chavis, Coach Chavis has to be happy with this. 92 yards rushing for the uh, Oklahoma State team and only 58 passing. Condridge, it's always uh, fun to see you, but here on Homecoming, we've enjoyed it, and I'm glad you brought a lot of your friends around. It's great to see those guys again. See you. Uh, I know you'll be on that game next week in Arkansas. Yes. Do a good job. It's good to work with you again, Bob. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Bob Bell for the whole crew. So long from Knoxville.